What is going on, everybody? It is episode 579 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I am here once again with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Happy Friday. As you can see, we have a special guest in the studio. It's not Shane Davis, unfortunately. I'm sorry to tell you, it's Mange. I'm sorry to disappoint. Ha ha! There we go. <laughs> we ready. How you doing, buddy? I'm, you know. I'm doing. I'm just, doing. I'm just doing. doing. Just, just doing. doing. I, I mean, I, I'm doing how I look. <laughs> Mary, Mary's still trying to figure it out. Yeah, I feel like you when BG Cumby was on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when BG Cumby was on, I was like, uh, I was very sort of taken aback by his very. <laughs> how would you describe his style of humor? I don't know, like dry, ironic. Um, My, it, you weren't prepared for yeah, it. I was not. Yeah. My style of humor style. is moist. There okay. you go. It's the opposite okay. of dry. Uh, are you one of those people who doesn't like that word? Moist? Moist? No, I think that's like people just hung on Wait, to that. What it was word? like a meme. Wait, Moist. What, what word? Moist. Uh, say it again. Moist. <laughs> that, that word. He loves it. Yeah. I'm just going to leave the camera on him. Okay. He's dealing with it. Uh, well, he deals with that, though, ladies and gentlemen. We're going we're gonna to get into a bunch of stuff today. It's going to be a, a relatively light Friday. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, as the Diddy trial, or the, the trial of Diddy, uh, all of the stories coming out about Diddy and his, um, uh, his house is being raided, all of these things going on. 50 Cent has his documentary coming out. He is now soliciting people to give him as much footage as possible from these parties, which has led to his own backlash because his ex-baby mama... Daphne Joy was named as a, a partner in this lawsuit, right? As a, a sex worker. A sex worker, but not an accomplice. Yeah. So, and he says now he's seeking sole custody of their of their child. And now she's saying, well, you remember when you raped me? Yeah. I'm not even kidding you. That's literally the order of events. Yeah. So yeah. now he's in hot water. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Rebel Wilson, who got into a bunch of stuff that I actually probably shouldn't say this early in the stream with Sasha Baron Cohen. Um, She's made allegations. This very, we'll very serious allegations. So we're going to talk about that. Also, if you guys haven't been paying attention to the political side of things, uh, women are getting knocked out in New York City. And one of those women happens to be desper uh, Desperate Housewives, uh, uh, Beverly. Beverly, uh, Beverly Not a Frankel. desperate housewife. A, a, real a real housewife. housewife. Bethany Frankel. Bethany Frankel is yes. Beverly, yes. Uh, same thing. Bethany, Beverly. It's like, it's like the same name. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and when I read that, I'm like, oh, we can talk about that now because other people have been getting into the story. Women have been coming out and making their TikToks about how they're getting punched in the face. Um, one lady said it looked like she's got a devil horn on her head. It was, uh, it was It's ridiculous. me too all over again. It, it really is. So I believe the women. <laughs> Well, I believe the I believe the bumps on their head. That's what I believe. That's, I believe the the black eyes and the bumps on sufficient their head. evidence. Yes, and yeah. people are mad at Tim. Oh yeah, because yeah. he said it was funny. Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that. We got a bunch of other stuff. So you know, if you guys are ready, we can just go ahead and get right into it. Yeah, yeah I'm ready. ready. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Actually, you know what? Before we get started, guys, hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel, please, if you have not done so already. Uh, remember to share these videos with your friends, these live streams with your friends so that more people can come in here and hang out. He's dancing right now. Uh, remember, all Super Chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those Super Chats right then and there, and then we will do our best to get back on topic. Perhaps you have a question for Mange. Yeah. There hasn't even been a crisis party, and he's dancing. Yeah. You're I, I'm not, you know, a little jiggle. He's, I wouldn't he's do it. He's <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's right. not a full-blown dance. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started then, shall we? All right, first things first. If you guys remember, we talked about Gypsy Rose Blanchard a week ago? Not that long not ago. Long. She claimed that she was about to completely quit social media. Well, that was she, a lie. Yeah, well, that was a lie. Yeah. Um, sad news for Gypsy. Apparently, she has announced her separation from her husband. And this is the man she married when she was still in prison. Yes. So that could have been a mistake. She said, people have been asking, what's going on in my life? Unfortunately, my husband and I are going through a separation, and I moved in with my parents' home down the bayou. I have the support of my family and friends to help guide me through this. I am learning to listen to my heart. Right now, I need time to let myself find who I am. Did you know who she was? Had you ever heard of this lady before? <laughs> no. She was not she's like not. a true crime local celebrity now, yeah. basically. Basically got away with uh, offing her mom. Okay, she didn't get away with it. She fully went to prison, so. <laughs> she, uh, but she got less of a sentence than her boyfriend. Yes. Yes. 
Correct. So, you know, she's going through a divorce. At least she didn't hurt this guy. That's a good thing. Yeah, she's learning that in order to cut a toxic person out of your life, you don't need to end their life. You don't need to actually cut them. Yeah, Wait, exactly. But this guy's in prison too? No, no, that was a different no. boyfriend. Her, oh, that's a different yeah. Boyfriend. yeah, her boyfriend is still, her ex, I guess, yeah. is, is still in prison. Hmm. Yeah. So, you know, good for her. Work on yourself. That's Work on important. yourself, queen. Work on yourself. All right, I, I found this one right before we went live. I wanted to show you this one. So uh, the rules have come out for the Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight. Did you see this? No. Earlier today? Okay, so 16-ounce gloves, two-minute rounds, no official judges, no winner unless KO. Each fighter must pass an EEG and EKG test. Why do they need to do those tests? Basically... One of those tests, I'm pretty sure, is Mike Tyson. Like once he's uh, just old, and they want to make sure he's not going to die in the middle of the fight. <laughs> well, it's that, and how many concussions he's probably had, not just fighting, but actually training. It's probably more the boxing commission. That actually sounds like the boxing commission's actually. This is a full-on fight, so there's no winner unless there's a knockout. Yep. This whole thing is the biggest spectacle ever. Oh my god. Do you think it's rigged? No, I, I think there's just a lot of money behind it because it's Netflix. Uh, you know, Jake Paul has, you know, a young streaming audience. I think there's just a big payday in all of this. I mean, I don't even think of his audience as streaming. Like, I, I almost feel like his audience is just their in, their internet audience, not well, Netflix audience, yeah. right? Well, I mean, but they're not going to pay. They don't, his audience isn't used to pay-per-view. Yeah. They're, they're not going to, they're not that They might guy. not even know what that is. No, they probably don't. So, you know what pay-per-view like, is, Mary? Uh, barely. <laughs> Do you want to explain this? When there used to be a really big Mike Tyson fight, you would have to pay a lot of money to watch these fights, mm -hmm. not just subscribe. $60 to a fight. $60 That's crazy. A fight. Yeah. And it, well, it was more if you were like a local business and you had like a bar. You couldn't just pay $60. I'm pretty sure you had to pay like a lot more because- It was like $180 yeah, or something, something like crazy that. For, uh, if it was for public viewing. Public viewing, yeah, yeah. So that's- WWE used to do this as well with their pay-per-views and stuff like that. They even continue to do it. So when WWE started the WWE Network where you could get all the pay-per-views for like $9.99 a month, right. that's where they also showed their shows, uh, they would still sell the pay-per-views for like $60, even though you could pay $9 a month for the- for the streaming service dude i so I, I somebody posted this jake paul's like over here making trolling videos he's chewing on ears I, i'm not even making chewing it up. on ears he's chewing on fake ears like he's just being a troll about this mike tyson you go follow him on twitter the dude's like killing it working out they got machines hooked up to him he, i didn't even know he could get in the shape he is right now yeah and like i it, it, this is going to be a different beast of a fight like i I'm pretty sure Jake Paul is going into this fight just so he can say, I was knocked out by Tyson. Not, I survived Mike Tyson, just like... Uh, I was knocked out by Tyson. Isn't you, you, he the he one who's like, knocked out. only lost once or he never it, lost? Uh, you know, but it's Mike Tyson. I don't care how, <laughs> if he only ever lost once. It's still Mike Tyson. Well, Jake is, he's known for doing the social media trash talk so that's just his thing it I doesn't was, mean he's not training i'm with serial killers so mike Here. mike tyson does have uh cbd gummies in the shape of torn off ears yeah. i kind of want them that's yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Well, well here's the thing about tyson there's, there's a couple of things here trash talk can either get in your opponent's head or it can fuel your opponent to beat your ass didn't I, work with uh who did who, is, who did he fight last he fought uh uh, the dude who is with his wife or with his girlfriend, you know what I'm talking about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 the, Wait, you mean Dylan Dance? No, 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 that was Logan. Oh, that was Logan Paul. Yeah, never mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Conor McGregor is a great example of that. Trash talking, you know. He, I mean, the dude has his leg broke. He's still trash talking. You know, it, it doesn't. You know, so I, I don't know how Mike works with trash talk. Like I, I don't. I, I just imagine I, he ignores it. <laughs> I, I don't he's know. He's heard enough. Yes. <laughs> he's heard enough. Uh, but this is a different Mike, too. This is Mike, uh, you know, after his daughter passed, um, which if you look at his his uh, workout videos, I mean, he, he has fought since then, but he seems super determined here. 
Like, he seems super determined. He's, like, got his daughter's tattoo on his chest. It's like, ah, this is a different Mike. He just I, really hates Jake Paul and wants to knock him out. We well, have a $20 one here from Corey Anderson says, Missed the first five minutes. I will flog myself and, recommend, and recompense. Mary, you look lovely. Brett, thanks. you look like you are from Minnesota. Guest, you look badass. Break, y'all. Uh, what is it? Y'all got plans for the weekend. Yep. When will HCB be back on? You got plans for this weekend? The the weekend's got plans for the main. <laughs> He's got stuff to do. I got stuff to do. Uh, and HCB will be back. Uh, so Mary will be out of town the 8th, the 9th, and the 10th, it looks like. And, and Hannah Claire has graciously agreed to help me out on at least two of those days. So yes. I believe the 8th and the 9th. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's going to be fantastic. <laughs> uh, somebody said, Crazy Cats says, does Mary even know who Mike Tyson is? Uh, yes, yes, I do she know does. who Mike Tyson is. We've talked about him before. All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's move on then, guys. So uh, <laughs> the onion, uh, again, uh, Mary, do you know what the onion is? I mean, I yes, I know what yeah. the onion is. I never knew it as it used to be. Yes. But now they're up for sale. Yep, they're they're being put right up for sale. Right after Jezebel got sold. Or actually, Jezebel wasn't sold. It was shut down because no one bought it. And I think they were owned by the same parent company. And this is and this is kind of interesting because people were making comparisons to the Babylon Bee recently because they made like one meme that people didn't like and people got really upset and hurt their feelings. And then they're like, you guys are turning into the onion. I'm like, I still remember a time long time ago, like when in like 2008 or 2009 or something like that, walking around like uptown in Minnesota when the onion was actually kind of funny. It hasn't really been funny in a long time. So it makes perfect sense that it's going to just get sold off. I mean, they, they have like an okay headline every once in a while, right? Uh, like, it was really funny. Like when uh, when all the stuff with Israel-Palestine started, like they started actually having some funny stuff. And I'm like, oh, they just needed neoliberal talking points to come back <laughs> to be funny again. They just really needed to feel like the Obama years to feel like the onion was like, relevant again. Okay, the first headline I see on the onion is every problem conservatives have is blamed on DEI. Like, that's just not no. funny. No. <laughs> uh, so he says it was an anti-white joke that just didn't hit. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was a joke. It was like, uh, well, people it expect... Well, didn't, it didn't hit. That's no. the truth. Um, no. Yeah, and none of, these, none of these headlines are really giving mm-hmm. what they're supposed to give. So uh, uh, be on the lookout. If you've got a certain amount of capital saved up, you could buy the onion. No one wants to buy the onion. You could buy the onion. You could do it right now. All right. Conjoined twins. Yeah, Brittany and Abby. Or I guess, I don't know, how did they decide which one would be named first? Abby and Brittany. Whichever head came Alphabetical first. order, so left to right, Abby. I don't even know. I don't know. Like, that birth must have been quite painful. Um, they just got married, or I guess one of them, one of them got, married. got married. Yes. Abby got married. Huh. But obviously that means that, you know, she had to rope Brittany into it. Um... This was haunting me yesterday Why? after we saw the news. I just, I can't wrap my head around it. Get oh it? my God. <laughs> wow. Get it? But don't, don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's just, I, I'm left with so many questions and no answers. All right. Let's just, let's just get it out there. They have this, they feel everything of the body, right? <laughs> like, together. well, yeah. I mean, they both say they have full control of the, of the body. Okay, so I don't know how that works. Yeah. But I mean, I assume that, you know, that (laughs) like they think more alike than than anyone. Right. So they're they are closer to one person than you than is like imaginable for like identical twins, right? So like uh... maybe I, so I was I went back last night. There was an old episode of Bones called Double Trouble on the Panhandle that I rewatched, and I found this interesting bit of trivia that was in there. You know, being the IMDb trivia person, it says several characters exhibit surprise that the twins could have had a sexual life while being conjoined. However, Chang and Ang Bunker, conjoined twins from, from is that from CM is like Siamese, uh, from whom we get the term Siamese twins, were not only married; they had ten and eleven children, respectively. Mm. Ten and, they, and one, I think. No. It's, oh, 11. Ten and oh, 11 oh, children, oh. respectively. They shared one home with a bed built for four until the wives, who were sisters, had a falling out, after which Chang and Eng split their, diff, their time between their wives' houses. Okay, were they attached at the, like, with the body or at the head? At the head. 
That's way yeah. different. That's way different. Yeah, because there's two different bodies. Right. This is one body, right? One body I mean, and two I mean, pets. For them, <clears throat> for her and her husband to, you know, they they, <laughs> they got to put a paper bag on the other one. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, they, I mean, what what are you doing? I dude? don't know. You, you, maybe you get like one of those doggy cones. You know, oh, like you, keep like, them away. And I'm, I like, immediately I was like, this should be illegal. But then I... I was like making wow. a law about this would be pointless because it's literally only them. Yeah. <laughs> like this is not really gonna happen again. I don't know. You would stand between love. I mean, what if the other one doesn't want to be married anymore, right? Well, they take a vote. He votes. I want it. The other one wants it. But then, then she loses. Yes, you draw straws. I, I mean, look, mean... there are. <laughs> I mean, maybe he, she has to go along with it. What's she going to do, like, stand in the way of her sister's love life? I mean. I don't know. But here's what happens. What if the other one, like, finds love, right? So then she's going to have to be yeah. like, okay, I need to take my uh, my half of the, the vagina and go... <laughs> I did, there's so, no half. Okay, so I did see the other day. So somebody drug like people were arguing about like the the ethica like the the ethical nature of this with the right. guy and they were judging him and it reminded me about the story about the girl who looked really young, who had the husband. Oh oh, she had like a condition where she never where she went looks puberty. perpetually like prepubescent. Yeah. yeah. But she's in her 20s and she got married and, and then people were like basically divided down the lines. I'm happy for her for finding love. This guy's a creep. Check his hard drive. And everyone's just arguing about it. And the only people who really win in these cases are like news sites that get to write articles about it. They get tons of clicks because people argue. Well, look at the, the pictures of this guy. He looks normal. Yep. Oh. Suspiciously normal. Too normal. A little too normal. Maybe he's got a fetish. I, like maybe God has weird. a plan. <laughs> That means he's weird. Yeah. But it, are we really just going to believe that he's such a good guy that he can look past it and that's that's the more likely outcome? I guess that's I what it think is. So. I guess that's what it is. I believe in love. Uh, I believe in love. I think he believes in oral sex. And uh, look, he's got two for one. I, I don't like what is what doesn't people get about this? Also, in that episode that I was that I was watching, the guy he's like with one of them and then breaks up with her, and and, and then is with the other twin. Okay, it looks like they're both they're they're teachers. They're both teachers. Yeah, what are you going to think? One, they're going to have different jobs. They can't. You have to. They yeah, have they, they kind of have to job. both. They kind of have to both be teachers. Yeah, I mean, or yeah. I guess I guess one could have yeah. like a. But look here, maybe maybe <laughs> if one these is girls. A if these girls were born 200 years ago, they would have made so much money in the circus, yes, right? Would've. But now, because we live in this, like, virtuous society oh, where God. we believe in equality and everything, now they're expected to get a normal job. No, 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 no. They could still make money in the circus. It's called YouTube or Instagram or TikTok. That's, they I mean, they that's could true. still do okay, it. Okay, that's a good that, point. They yeah. could still do it. Now, here's the real question. Let's, the, get, let's get over to this guy for a second. Did they give them one social security number or two? I can't even imagine. It's got like a dash. How do they know. tax them? How do yeah. they tax them? Are they taxed as one person or two? <laughs> do Are they, they get paid one pay? salary? That, I don't know. Ah. I mean, I thought it must really suck that they have to eat half as much food. Um, like yeah. each person has to eat half the amount of food that, for one person, right? Yeah. What? They just two. cut a sandwich in uh, half. That, they just cut a Anna, sandwich in half. And that Star Wars girl says two. Two. They have to be uh, two, taxed so. for two, pay for two. The government, there's no way they're taxing them as one, I'll tell you that. They're getting taxed for two. Damn. That's just wild. The, uh, like, uh, so they could do different jobs. So one's a teacher, right? Maybe the other one's like an accountant and she just puts some headphones on, she has her calculator, and just does her job while the other one is teaching. I mean, can you imagine being one of the students? Do you think they get made fun of? Wait, can they? Kids are savage. Who controls what arm? Like does and they one... both control both? Yeah, according to them. Then they can't do two different jobs. Or kind they of... really, they really are missing out by not just having a YouTube. They they could make a ton of money on social. Well, media. Well, they have a TikTok. Yeah. 
uh, they could be making a ton of money doing that. Like that really is. It's 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 funny that you mentioned that because I just watched an episode of I don't I think it was the X Files episode where they talked about how political correctness killed the circus, saying like everyone in this town. It was like this episode of the show where basically it was this carny town that used to exist. Okay. And the point is, is it's now fallen into disrepair because political correctness killed their ability killed to make money. PC right? killed the carny. Yeah, basically. Uh, and so now all it does is mean that they have to go work for themselves. Yeah. Independent contractors rather than getting taken for by some, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, showrunner. You can go to Vegas. Yeah, they can go do that. So, you know what? I, oh, my gosh. That was like that crinkled so loud in the microphone. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's just caught every, they just turned into an ASMR channel for a yeah. second there. All right. Uh, if that's not enough, guys, uh, we make fun of Hollywood a lot, and they've got a lot to be made fun of right now because a bunch of A-listers are pissed because squatters have taken over a $5 million mansion and are throwing cocaine-fueled orgies in a Beverly Hills home. The home was previously owned by an orthopedic surgeon who fled to Lebanon after he was accused of murdering his 21-year-old model girlfriend. It's a story as old as time in Hollywood. He, he's obviously innocent. He Let's is. just not throw men up under the bus like that. <laughs> Believe all men. Uh, it says the it was previously owned by this guy, Johnny Woodward, the real estate agent for the home, was informed by one of the workers that a U-Haul truck had pulled up. He went to check the property and discovered that the locks had been changed and the for sale sign removed. He, had, he said at the time the squatters had been there since October, charging rents for rooms and throwing massive parties mm -hmm. all night long. See, <laughs> why do van life when you can just go find places where people are stealing the homes of famous people and turning into squatters rights? So this one of the neighbors is LeBron James, and he's had enough. I'm sure he has. Oh, Pat the Plumber says, uh, one, says one of us, one of us. What? That's what his, that that's his super chat. One of us, one of us. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I um, mean, in a way, I, I, I adore this, right? Like, in, in Cause a we weird just way. talked about this on Ballers like yeah, last week. Yeah, yeah. It was a case in New York, which is like super left, right? So like, obviously this is California and like somebody's gotta get some something on law right squatters this whole thing it's kind of funny i i i i don't want it to happen to me but i'm not going to live in a liberal state but it's it's still kind yeah. of funny well you like to see it when these things come back to bite them right they vote for these bit, policies yeah. so you know you you deal with what you got i'm picturing lebron james has like this really really like uh specific workout routine that he does every day to get ready for a game and then there's just loud music being played in the background and he can't concentrate Someone from Progressive DA George Gasson's office heard about the situation, but stated in response, squatters have rights. Ugh. Thanks, Obama. Seriously. <laughs> this Seriously. is a definitely a thanks, Obama situation. It's all his fault. It really is. <laughs> all right. Uh, in the Darwin Award of the week, uh, American YouTube star, your fellow Arab, kidnapped in Haiti while trying to meet gang leader Barbecue. If you don't remember, Barbecue was the guy who runs the, uh, the, gr the gang that uh, has a bunch of cannibals. Yeah. Cannibals. I, I didn't really look into that whole story that much, but I did hear about barbecue. Yeah, barbecue. He's kind of like the corn pop of Haiti. Yeah, he's a bad dude. Yeah, he's a he's bad, bad dude. dude. Um, uh, okay, so here's the story. Uh, it says- So 20, 24 hours after he arrived in Haiti, uh, him and a Haitian colleague were taken by members of the gang on March 14th. He's being held for a $600,000 ransom. Even though 40000 has already been paid, the kidnappers are continuing to demand a large sum of money to secure his release. Yep. Wow. Hmm. You can't deal with terrorists. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's it. You know, he's, he's dead. Can a generous benefactor help him out? Like, no, they've only raised 40 k No, he's going to be cannibal shit. Like, I guess what? people yeah. feel like, you know, you asked for trouble. Yeah, like a lot of people would have a hard time. But that's also kind of weird, though, right? Like, people want citizen journalists to go and cover stuff like this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this says Lord Miles talked to the guy. Lord Miles did? Yeah, he reached out to him on WhatsApp. He claims he spoke directly with the YouTuber using his kidnapper's phone. So he said that he arrived in the country with a fixer 
to film the uh, the ongoing riots in Haiti and was kidnapped just 24 hours after he arrived. See, like, I'm Kept one in hand, a cage. On one hand, people would like citizen journalists to go and cover stuff like this because you're not always going to get the mainstream media to cover it. But then at the same time, I feel like people would have more sympathy if, like, a company sent this guy out there and this happened than him going on his own. Pat the Plumber said, does barbecue consider him white meat or dark? <laughs> uh, Both. I think yeah. the most likely person to go try to save this guy is Miles. Yeah. What was his story again? Um, he went to Afghanistan during the aftermath yeah. of the withdrawal. Yeah. Back in, what was that, 2021? 2021. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Hung out with the Taliban and made friends with them. Let's hope uh, hope he's okay. Well, he just needs to do what Miles did, make friends with your captors. Correct. That was a few years back. There was a chick that got, a, got yanked across the line, like in North Korea, South Korea. North yeah. Korea. Yeah, yep. and they, they basically pulled her back and held, they captured her for, was it a woman or am I mixing this up? I think that, I don't that know. I never right. heard about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, uh, it's not just that story, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Aiden Ross, I don't know if you know who Aiden Ross is. He's a streamer. Uh, he wants to go and stream. <laughs> he wants to go stream at Auschwitz. Remember when that girl took selfies at Auschwitz and yeah. got so much shit for it? Yeah. She, she walked so that Aiden Ross could run. That's, uh, I mean, there was like a lot of stories at the time. Remember the woman who took like thirst trap photos at her dad's funeral? Yes. Like next to her dad's oh, casket. Yeah. And they were like, like. Wasn't it in like an open casket too? Yes. That was the real part. This wasn't a closed casket. If you're like, dad's just there looking up and she's just like poking her ass out. Seems a little bit poor taste. It's kind of like that one video where the girl's like, my, uh, the girl's like, my, my child was diagnosed with like RSV and then starts dancing next to the baby in the NICU. <laughs> So we have a video of Aiden explaining yeah. his plans here, right? Here we go. Mm. I just wanted to collab with some German. If there's any German streamers that want to collab with me, let me know right now. Oh, my God. I was, I'm getting ready to go to Germany. And then uh, I think me and Tal are going to take one day and go to Auschwitz on stream and, like, do a tour. Um, we, might, we, might, we, might, we might not be able to stream it, though. Because, well, we're going to do a video. Oh, here you go. Here, we're, I'll, listen, the chat is going to be on Evo only, okay? I'm doing this for awareness because the Holocaust is a horrible thing. <laughs> As he takes a bite of food. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't he know that it's in Poland? Um No, he doesn't. <laughs> the uh the thing the, the, is Yeah, he the, him asking for Germans to go with it to live stream and it's in Poland yeah. is like you know, uh. um, this guy. The, it reminds me you know, there was a there was a pro wrestler named Bob Holly. He, for exactly like one week, he had a finisher called the Holocaust. Oh, and, my God. And then yeah. they decided to pull it because even for the Attitude Era, that was more than they could bear. Um, I don't think we need a streamer to bring awareness that the Holocaust was bad. That it's is, like, I can't believe that I can't go to Auschwitz and stream on kick because of political correctness. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's like, because it was like totally like a bad like thing. Mm -hmm. Like the Holocaust was like bad. Well, I'm pretty sure that Aiden Ross, I mean, I might be confusing him with someone else. I'm pretty sure Aiden Ross has like said positive things about Hitler on his stream. Oh, so. my God. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, in the chat, uh, so he says, uh, Aiden is Jewish, by the way. He just doesn't care. Well, it's because he's separated from it by like many, uh, many miles and many decades of time, right? It's just, it doesn't really resonate with him in that same way. But it, that's why most people would say that if your content is supposed to be serious, then make it serious. If you don't have a serious channel, maybe stay away from the serious stuff. It would be like me and Mary going and covering something serious. It's just not really what we're gonna do. He should bring uh, Kanye with him. <laughs> they that's, can go do it together. They should do a collab. All right, all right, I, I gotta get your opinion on this one. Chain, or yeah. should I say mange? Oh. Uh, Microsoft cautions developers to avoid curvy female characters. Now, this has been going on in comics forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it says uh, Microsoft urges developers not to create female characters with exaggerated body proportions on their official site to support game devs. So here are the official guidelines from their site. No fun for anyone. Are you reinforcing any negative gender stereotypes? Are you unnecessarily introducing gender and gender barriers into your code or design? Are you creating playable female characters that are equal in skill and ability to their male peers? 
Are your female characters equipped with clothing and armor that fits their tasks? Do they have exaggerated body proportions? Mm. And when the story allows, do you show male characters who display a full range of emotions, including joy, sadness, and vulnerability? Did you guys see the Dove commercial? This this is topical to this, where it was like a, a, a video game super chick, and then she pulls off her armor and she's fat. Yes. I yes. yeah. I think yep. we actually covered that. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah. This is all like a thing that's happening in games, and and, and probably a lot of no offense, girls, some of you over my weight limit. I I just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Right? So I understand that you want representation and body types in this, but it's escapism. You're talking about characters that have to sometimes crawl through air ducts and jump off the ground and jump over pits and monsters and stuff. There's a certain body weight that allows for those physics to happen. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, this is escapism, and you have to kind of look at, like, what the general population sees as attractive. I mean, if you think about it, though, movies. if the female character is fat, she still has exaggerated body proportions. In the wrong just areas. exaggerated in the wrong places. <laughs> in the wrong places. Yeah. You Here, know, here's the trailer. Uh, let's see uh, don't don't talk out. to me about no trailer. I don't know if it's got copyrighted music or anything. But I don't think yeah, here's, so. Like, so, what? Really, she's just wearing a, a corset over you know, under the armor. That one, that's the best corset I've ever seen. Yeah. And she wiped that burger juice off. <laughs> them Cheetos. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look, that's where we're at. Look, I, you, here's the problem with representation. You can't represent everybody. You can't because the general population's like, there's an ideal human form that people like ever since the Greeks and Romans. And you look at the statues, it's like there's ideal proportions, especially for heroes, especially for men. And it's weird, too. They're all about the women's figure and the, and the male gaze and all of this stuff. It's like, you know, men sitting here with the, the big pecs, the big biceps, all of that. That's not realistic, but we're not bitching about it. No, men you know? want, men are like, sweet, I want to go to the gym and look like that. Yeah, I want to go to the gym. Women and look get like angry that. and are say, I don't look like that. They should change it. Women look at that and say, I want to look like that. Let me run my finger down my throat. Come on, get on it. <laughs> also, like, like, what was that? So they said equal stats to men. The whole, one of the whole points of stats is that you should excel at some things and not at other things to make it realistic. Yeah, it's just equal in all skills and that abilities. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense and completely destroys the purpose of having stats to begin with. What was the one after that? Armor and clothing that fits with their tasks. Okay, I hate that argument too. Uh, if you watch pro wrestling, nobody wears something that's actually beneficial to what they're what, what to what they're doing, right? <laughs> right. No. Women, women, basic the women pro wrestlers basically dress in lingerie. <laughs> they do. Okay, well, but it's fake. Because it's perform, it's a performance. So it's just like the video game fake. is fake too. But here, wait, wait. But they here. also want all the male characters to be blubbering messes, right? To uh, cry about everything. Is that what I'm getting here? More emotional, yeah. yeah. They you want know. them to be vulnerable. When, when, I am. Yeah. It's like you, you want somebody to save your life. You want that person to be really in touch with their feelings. Uh -huh. So it's like uh, when I get saved, like if I'm in a house fire. The person right. that saves me, it either has to be a woman or it has to be a guy who's willing to cry <laughs> about it. And, uh, that, that fireman, he better, better be, be crying. He <laughs> better be crying and not because of the smoke. Mm. Yeah. When I say video, these video games are real, I'm saying, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Do not misinterpret me. But, but here's the thing. Again, it's escapism, but it is a product and you need like an attractive protagonist to sell the product. Okay? I, because again, you hopefully you're selling the video game to dudes you know, like Laura Croft, right? Tomb Raider. A lot of guys played that game, a lot of girls too, but probably a lot of guys, but it was a top selling video game because she had tits. Yep. You know, I mean, I, I just, and I, I don't mean to sound like a pig, but let me sound like a pig. Like we need curves on women. We do in the right curves, in the right places. And come on guys, we, we know this. That is true. Apple Apple Pitt says WWE told the female wrestlers not to show skin at the Saudi Arabia show. They weren't allowed to show skin at the Saudi Arabia. So just them being allowed to perform there was revolutionary uh, revolutionary enough. 
Mm -hmm. uh, because having female performers at a Saudi Arabia show was a really big deal. But they did have to cover up. But they did do a lot of great, like, before and afters of, like, what the women would dress like on a normal show versus what they dress like there. And they're basically just covered head to toe. Well, this whole issue about, like, objectification in video games is intertwined with the conversation about extremism in gaming culture and... I recently saw this report from the ADL calling for toxic online video games to get regulated the same as social media yeah. because of rampant hate and extremism. And then self-proclaimed biological disaster said that gaming has a serious racism and white supremacy problem. There's a, there's a big one there from Justin there real quick. Uh, Mary, how is that OF coming along? It must be close to the debut. I can feel it in my bones. The army of simps is waiting. You guys are awesome. This was a joke. Don't hate me, Mary. Okay, that, that reminds me of something. So I was talking to a friend last night who... About my OnlyFans? Yes, about your OnlyFans. Okay. I was talking to a friend about your OnlyFans. No, I was talking to a friend last night who I know him through skating and he knows that I do this podcast, but he doesn't... I don't think he watches it. At least he's never indicated that he does. And he said that it got mentioned... Um, and he, he goes, uh, they mentioned Mary Morgan OnlyFans. And, and I was who? like, uh, and I said, what podcast or who are you listening to? He goes, it was It's a Gundam. I've never heard of that. Um, it was It's a Gundam. And I was like, they must be talking about the fact that there isn't one because that's the whole thing is that Mary. <laughs> and then I had to explain to him that you're, uh, that you're very against these things. And yeah, it, for, for religious reasons, and he like for some reason because of the way I suck at explaining things, as people who watch the show will understand. He's like, wait, so she's devout, she's religious and devout, but she's, but she has an OnlyFans. I'm like, no, she doesn't have one, and that's what they're saying. And I'm like, I have to go back for like our whole history from like the day. I think the they just heard started. like the name, and they heard the word OnlyFans, and they kind of just stopped listening after that. Very likely true. Yeah. So yeah, video games cause extremism. <laughs> Yes, yeah. uh, there's a serious racism and white supremacy problem. It's used as a recruiting tool for the alt-right and has only become worse over the years. We white people have an obligation to stand up against it and push back whenever we see it. I, uh, I have no obligation to do anything at all. Is it just because um, young men are like the predominant audience for video games mm -hmm. and young men also happen to be more right wing well you just had a tweet did you not yeah that mentioned this how well, can not video games but, not but i games, said but... the right is yeah. winning with young men and the statistics prove that they're losing with young women and what if anything should be done to change that how would how would mange get women to vote <laughs> how do you get women to vote republican mange uh, I us. run for office. There you go. You should. Uh, the, uh, finally change things. <laughs> nah, yeah. Decency no. is back on the ticket. <laughs> but, 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 but in the all honesty, are back in the room. <laughs> but in all honesty, there is a lot of women that do play video yeah. games. It, it's not that they don't. I don't know if women are really asking for this. I, I, I feel like if I, if I had to say who's asking for this, it's probably like woke dudes i i really you do think? it i i absolutely know i don't think women are really screaming for this i don't think women pay attention to the conversation about like video games or gaming wait like uh in relation to or gamer the, gate to which part to the part about uh white supremacy and stuff like that or i mean i think it's both? trans software developers to be honest yeah. because trans yeah. people are overrepresented in that field yeah and they're usually men who, you know, fancy themselves to be women who want to talk about women's rights. Well, a few years ago. That's what it seems like to me. From, yeah. From well, a few years ago, I brought this up to you off air, but like they started to like make these criterias for winning game awards and it was going to be representation, um, ethnicity being put into the game, different locations, different culture, cultural type stuff being mm -hmm. forced into a game to qualify for game awards. And we are starting to see game companies take a position and modify games to, to just be more social, what is sociably acceptable, which is kind of bullshit. I've seen it happen in comics and it usually has a drop off in sales. People just turn their backs on it. I just thought it was interesting because we were talking about, I said, well, who really uses award like awards given as like a reason to buy something but i think it doesn't really matter because movies do this too they chase awards but for movies it's a little bit different because they don't expect those movies 
to have big box office. I, I right. think of The Last of Us as a great example of that. Like the first game won a, a shit ton of and awards. did a lot of good and, and, and did the good first one and did good business. And then from that, then they were getting a movie deal or maybe a TV show. At the time, it, it wasn't settled. And it was at that time. There was like there was supposed to be a movie made about it years before yeah, the yeah, TV yeah, show yeah, ever got made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and and then they go into two with again still winning awards yeah. and and the TV show and stuff. And it's like it, it's I don't know. It's the bigger scope of business, the bigger brand. Not I mean, eventually that they'll abandon the core base that made it what it was. Yeah. You know, which was the original fans of the. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, also, if you're looking, if you guys were wondering, if you were wondering, like, whether, uh, how they were going to do the story for The Last of Us Season 2, um, they're, like, just, they, like, just started filming Season 2 of The Last of Us, and Pedro oh, Pascal boy. is already done. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> if, if, take Amazing. of that what you will. Amazing. Take of that what you will. Uh, I, wow, I, think, uh, I can't I think wait. <laughs> Can't wait for the so, Bella Ramsey TV show. So the, really, the the question is, is like, what do I hate more? What they did in the second game, or the, or do I like more the idea that I don't have to look at Pedro Pascal again for at least a couple of months? You don't dislike Pedro Pascal I, as an actor. No, I, I don't dislike him, but that that's I not really. Um, <laughs> uh, I, he's also one of those people who's so very annoying that it's it tests my. I talk a lot about the ability to. Um, to compartmentalize, like if you do this job, you have to be able to go watch a movie with an actor who you know says super annoying shit, yeah, and it's just stupid, and be able to judge it based on the movie and not based on them being an okay. idiot. For, and for I Bella Ramsey, that. like I can't do that because I don't like looking at Bella Ramsey. Mm. That's different than what she says, though. You just don't like looking at Bella Ramsey. No, no. I mean, it's the personality that it's like physiognomy, right? <laughs> it's, uh, you can see someone's personality in their there face. Uh, I, I, as far as I'm concerned with the video game stuff, I feel bad for you guys. Look, I'm I'm following very very distantly what's going on with Black Girl Gamers and, and with GamerGate two and all that stuff. We don't talk it, about it a bunch on here because I kind of just take it from a passive perspective. It's right. a lot. Every time I see a Mark Kern tweet, there's like ten thousand new things that have come mm -hmm. out, and I'm just like. I, I'm literally just so dumb, I get overwhelmed. It's, it's like, like the Diddy, I can't do this. the Diddy stuff. Yes. It's exactly the same. I, I like, I like, I'm like, I'm too dumb to to follow all this. Let's go make fun of rappers. That's that's yeah. that's way easier <laughs> if we, if we do that. Like, uh, I take the easy way out. What can I say? But I, I did see yesterday they were saying that it was possible that side scrollers got taken down um, because they were talking about this and things like that. So I don't know. They had gothics on, right? Yes, uh, very recently. To yep. talk about Gamergate? Uh, well, to talk about Black Girl Gamers specifically because mm -hmm. she uh, was involved with them back in the day. So it's uh, it's all a whole uh, hullabaloo that I do not really um, get involved with. But uh, yeah. I feel bad for y'all because it feels like video games are getting wor uh, are getting ruined as much as comics or movies are these days. Yeah, I mean, it's it's still the same activist, you know? The yeah. whole idea is to... Is same personality to, type. Yeah, but to get propaganda in media, like if you can get people to ingest your propaganda, then you can kind of change the way they think about everything socially and politically. Yeah. And it's whether it's very low-key or very obvious they're doing it, I mean, that's the game here. That's the goal of all of this. It sucks. It's it's weird too because it feels like it all it comes full circle because it's like it was going on in comics before then. Well, the game stuff doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. I, it, this part because you can pretty much there's so many skins and mods and body types and and uh, that they can actually add and build to accommodate everybody. If somebody wants a, mm. a, a different body type, then that's a DLC skin you can sell them. Actually, I would monetize it. If there is a woke demographic that wants that representation, sell it to them. But the, it rather- They don't spend money though. They know that, that, that <laughs> but, but, but this, this is going to just lose money overall. Like it, this doesn't even seem like a problem that there's not an easy fix to accommodate everybody with just with DLCs and stuff. I think a lot of it also has to do with like when things just become more mainstream and you can't avoid the outside influence of people that want to change culture for reasons that have nothing to do with the, with the subculture specifically.
it's really bad too in a weird way where retro characters are coming back like a new street fighter game and stuff like that and then yeah. everybody's been out of shape with uh cammy or chun li Chun-Li. In it or something like yeah. that and different skins and how sexually objectifying it is. but it's like but that's why i'm buying street fighter okay <laughs> like that to look at i'm the- sorry i'm sorry <laughs> that's why i'm buying street fighter so it, it just doesn't make sense. Plus, uh, some of these games, you know, um, if, if the developers are in Japan, they don't really buy into this shit, you know? Like, and, and they're not just building a game for the U.S. market or the Western market. Now they want to make that money too. But, like, if I live overseas, there's tons of games they have that don't even come over here. Gundam games, different things that they just, they, they, there is a game market outside the United States. And that that's what's weird that we think this is going to affect and we're going to fight over this to affect all video games it's like dude like we import a lot of this stuff you know like capcom stuff like that bandai they're not they're not american companies i'm going to read this one from justin real quick even though we're not in super he says this is my first live show how do i make them dance my 100 hundred dollar super chat didn't do it actually it did it's just it's on a timer my friend so basically uh the crisis meter which you see down at the bottom of the screen right below mary there um every hundred dollars triggers a crisis party but it takes uh anywhere from zero to seven minutes to trigger because what happens is it's on a automated system where it checks for that I'm, uh through I'm, the app i'm sure that's a sexy woman asking and begging for me they just want dance. you to dance they more. just want me to dance. they just they want, want you to dance, to dance more so if you wanted more of that I mean, he's, <laughs> yeah, giving, he's giving it to you for free right now <laughs> but uh <laughs> that's not really how this Why works buy the cow when you can get the milk for exactly free. when you Should, can get the mange sh- for free mange just doesn't understand the free market economy that's that's the problem <laughs> uh but the thing is like with uh with comics when it was happening it feels like comics right now is this stuff even still going on i can't believe she accused me of selling mange milk I just, <laughs> mary I mean, come on mange milk is this stuff still going on like how, how bad is it in <clears throat> comics right now it feels like look i still follow like a lot of the co- like the channels that talk about comics and it just feels like more of the same infighting in community one of the last covers i ever did at marvel comics uh, and it was printed it was a black widow cover um uh, editors actually asked me to kind of thicken up her midsection to accommodate. I mean, it was a thing. Um, Could you make it look you... like she had like a couple of burritos before she went on this mission? How did they not... word that? Well, they're like the ratio of her hips to boobs. They were kind of like, can you uh, change her boob size? And so I just kind of, rather than So you responded by top... making them bigger? No, I, I, <laughs> I responded by just blowing her midsection out because it's all relative. Uh-huh. What's, like, what's so... funny is like when, when they made the Black Widow movie, Right, and they did the initial trailer for it. I was actually really surprised. So the like the title graphic, like the motion graphic that they created for the for the title Black Widow, actually had her walking through a doorway, and it was a silhouette of her hips. And they actually had because it was actually Scarlett Johansson, and she actually has the wide hips because the character does. And I was surprised they didn't even try to shrink that down in in post for that. Ironically, though, like when she was doing like a, it was one of the Avenger movies, she was pregnant and they, I was watching a whole video about it the other day. They were having to get body doubles and like hmm. use CG graphics to take her belly off. Like she was showing, it was like a whole Crazy. thing. I was watching about that. So it's, it's, it's weird. I mean, they realize people want to see a sexy black widow, yep. but the comic industry, and again, it's, you know, it's been infiltrated by, you know, left-wing activists and stuff like that. It's like, no, you can't sexually objectify a woman, but it's okay to sexually objectify every male superhero that's like 250 pounds of pure muscle with a six pack showing. You know, it's like- People I, don't really see that as sexual. It, but fair. it's the, the women same who body go see it standard, do. so. It's the same body standard. I'm unsure, so. I don't know. <laughs> I just, it, cause we were talking before about how we were saying like, look, uh, Hugh Jackman talks about how it's getting harder and harder to get into shape to play Wolverine as he gets older. Yeah, and older. yeah of that course. That dude, yeah. if you ever see, he just he wants to go back on Broadway. All he wants to do is go <laughs> sing uh, and do his Broadway uh, shows. But when he talks about it, I'm like, dude, just go up to him and be like, why are you holding me to such a sexist standard? Let me be chubby Wolverine. Like yeah. theoretically, they should allow him to fall under the same standards, but they won't. 
but I just don't buy that female audiences respond ah. to visuals the same way that men, that, that the, male audiences. The Oculus is such a lie. Office. Oh my God. How, what, whoa, 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 whoa. Because men and women are different. The oh. Aquaman box office proves that to be not true. The fact that more yes. women went to see Aquaman than yes. men just so, so they could see Jason Moe without a shirt on means that there at least is an audience for that. Take every Harley Quinn novel. Like all those cheap romance novels, like with the dude shirt on the, you know, just like, like look at <laughs> that. Ah, Airport know. romance. No, he's right. He's right. I mean, Wait, you're going to tell what? me women don't look at men's bodies? Are you really no, saying I'm that? No, I'm not saying that. Do you remember what I said? You said that women don't have the same beauty. Like, I, I mean, I'm saying that females don't respond to visuals the same way that men do. It is, however, true that they say that it's proven that men are more visually inclined That's than women. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So, Which I'll, is why it's not so sexualized. When there's a wall of like romance novels, a, girl, a woman's like not grabbing the one that looks the sexiest. I don't know. I mean, I've never read a romance novel. I'm, I'm, I mean, it is there is the, the <laughs> argument that's made is like there's a reason why men look at porn and women read romance novels or like Fifty Shades of Grey because men like visual smut like, and women why are they like going for a novel smut. in the first place? That's the the answer is yeah. in the question. But the, but like, the picture of the uh, it's they don't put Chubby McChubberson on the cover sure, of that novel, of right? Not. So uh, it's an interesting. Even though discussion. They're, they're trying to astroturf the dad bod. Oh yeah, with these with... pictures of Travis Kelsey on the beach. <laughs> I mean, uh, like clearly Taylor Swift is into that. She, but she's a, she's got like she's she's off season right now too. She had, like, <laughs> yeah. they were they were pointing that out. They're That's like, okay. Look, they're you like, know, look, they're both off, off season it, right now. Is it? Yeah, no I mean they're not be fat. Off-send. No woman should be off season. Well, I mean for her work, she, her work requires. She's already her like really skinny, so I mean she's still skinny even in off season. But what's funny about that? They're like they're astroturfing the dad bod. They're like he's literally a world class athlete. <laughs> Yeah, like, he does not have a well, dad. He's bod. also on the verge of retirement. Yeah. So. So. Then he's gonna go full, full dad bod. Yeah, he will. I, I still say that him and him and his brother, like, if he wants to become more likable, he should have a a show with his brother. Well, he does. What uh, do you mean? Not not a podcast, like a show show. Oh, like, oh, like a reality TV yeah, thing. Yeah, like mm-hmm. uh, I, I like the idea. They said like J- J- Jason Kelsey should have a show where he goes and he tours all the different stadiums and does all of their ch- uh, tailgating and like just. Why talks don't they to do fans. like a chasing Kelsey but with Jason instead of Travis? Way better. That would way be better. way better. Yeah. Wait, is Jason Kelsey married? Yes. And Damn. Mo- and okay, they can't do kids. that then. Never yeah. mind. Uh, they, they could have like him and his like his family could have a reality show. Sure. There you go. People love that. All right. What would you guys like to see? Cringe or cute of the day? Mange. You decide. Mm, cringe. Let's do cringe. Let's do cringe first. I got, uh, I got this one. We had it during the week of Mary. If you got another one we can look at, we've got this one as well. But we got this one. It says, amazing wedding vows. Brings a tear to my eye. Be careful, though. This is a Jebra Fauché okay. account. Here we go. And now the bride would like to say her. This is classic millennial wedding vows. Okay, sometimes I wish that you were pizza because if you were pizza up here, I would just take a bite out of you right now. Pizza's bae. I just want to take a slice out of you. She loves pizza. I have a song I've prepared. I am woman, I am fearless, I am sexy, I'm divine. I'm unbeatable, I'm creative. Honey, you can get in line. I am feminine, I am masculine, I am everything I want. I can love you, but not as much as Rosé. I can leave you, because uh. I got the going on. You got the, 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 Going on, got you going on. Like I thought Woo. this was gonna stop 30 All seconds right. ago. It's a, she's a comedian, right? Yeah, I, I've been in this guy's shoes. Okay. I know what this is. I know yes. what this is. I know what this, this is. This is what your vows sound. No, like. no, no. I wouldn't marry this. I that, I've been here before. The white guys have. She's crazy, but she's good in the sack, but embarrassing to your friends. Yes, that's it. Well, could she like choose to just not embarrass you on one day? Like, pick one day. To uh, it was a skit, you. right? It's a skit. Okay. Uh, at least as far as I know, it's a skit. Uh, but she's she's literally wearing uh, sneakers. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. I'm sure that people have unironically worn sneakers. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we had the we had the one where we where they did the wedding vows and the guy just said something really. I'd stupid. love to smack that every day. Yeah, and then the and then the 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 guy the, who's, the pastor was, the pastor? was like, he was like, you want to add anything? And he's like, he's like nope. trying to save him. Yep. Ugh. Never, Ugh. That was real. Yep. <laughs> All right. Cue to the day. Wash it off, guys. It's it's good. We're good. Yeah. All right, here we go. This one is from Adam Kember. Says, this is my dog, Ralph, at just over six weeks old. Owner claims he was a Kelpie Husky. As he grew, he became more in size and color to a dingo. He cute. Look at the blue Aww. eyes. Hmm. It's cute. Let's do one more. This is from Sabine. This says, uh, Simba's a PCC. It says, Simba's A, hashtag PCC, hashtag Q to the day. Seven-year-old Tibetan Mastiff, the, guard, uh, the guards of the house, by, dra uh, by draft stopping at the front door. He barks. I look over. He doesn't even raise his head. He knows his voice carries. Cute. It's very cute. Sleeping. I like this one. <laughs> that uh, angle. <laughs> uh, I like this one. Addendum. Before and after his spa day, every summer I take the yard rake to, rake to the carpet after this guy. <laughs> mm. Cute. Cute. All right. All right, guys. Uh, remember, hashtag PCC Pets on Twitter and tag me and the show in there, uh, at Brett Dasovic, and you will uh, be able to get them featured on here. We always like to do that. All right, Mary, what the hell is going on with 50 Cent? <laughs> 50 Cent is still promoting this upcoming documentary, Exposing Diddy. It seems like they've been rivals in the industry for quite a while, and Diddy doesn't have anything on 50 Cent, so he's not afraid of him. But this is interesting. He is now seeking sole custody of his and his ex, Daphne Joy's son, who's 11 years old, after she was named in the Diddy lawsuit. Yep. Um, she was named as one of the sex workers in the lawsuit, but not as an accomplice who was aiding and abetting the crimes. But still, definitely a red flag for the mother of your child. And he posted, you moved a, a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me, but I was busy. So you moved back and then you started receiving money from brother love. That's Diddy, obviously. Now here we are, little sex worker. <laughs> I love the complete lack of decorum and politeness. So then she decided to respond with a novel on her Instagram story, making some pretty serious allegations against him. Corey Anderson sent a $20 here. He said, we have our new people's joker. That was the cringiest thing I've ever seen. I would have walked away if that was my wife. <laughs> but my wife was smart enough to get all the paperwork signed before the ceremony. Ah, she outsmarted you. We mm -hmm. got another $20 from uh, Pranvat Galati, said mange is massive. Mange is massive. I don't yeah. know what, what currency is that? Uh, it's like a symbol. It's, that's not real no money. That's fake as far as I'm concerned. No it's as real as this. So here was Daphne Joy's post. This, again, is 50 Cent's baby mama. She said, everything is a joke to you until your, our safety is compromised, which is happening now. You're wreaking real havoc, frenzy, and chaos onto people's lives. How would you feel if Sire was the one in handcuffs for nothing? We moved to New York to give you the opportunity to be a father to your son, and you saw him 10 times out of the two years we lived one mile away from you. I'm tired of upholding and protecting an image to our son that you have never even earned. Let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of raping and physically abusing me. You are no longer my oppressor and my God will handle you from this point on. You have permanently damaged the last hope I had for you as a father to preserve our family with these last and final false claims made against me. You've broken our hearts for the last and final time. So I don't know how you can really refute being named in the lawsuit mm -hmm. until this thing goes to trial and we actually get to see evidence um but now 50 cent is just trying to go around the law and get people to send him footage from diddy's freak off parties mm. <laughs> we got another 21 uh 20 one there from aaron p got that one he said you guys are a positive outcome from it you never or i never would have Got recommended you guys if I never saw it, but the whatever podcast is for what, imbeciles. Imbeciles, the hot, the girls, the liberals, the conservatives are all idiots. Except for Mary. When Mary was on there, she was the smart one. 
Well, that's that's a good thing that me going on whatever brought some people to the show, yep. at least. Hmm. Um, but yeah, at 50 Cent posted on Instagram, SMH, this is going to be so good. What you want to bet, I'm going to get these tapes. I'll pay top dollar for them. So he's telling anyone who's been to a puffy party to send over whatever footage they have of illegal activity yeah. for his documentary. Even though um, Rodney Jones, the one who filed the lawsuit, he claims that he has hundreds of hours of footage already. Yeah, but 50 Cent might want to stay away wraps. from that because it's involved actual prosecution and he yeah. doesn't want to get involved, you know, hindering prosecution, something like that, not something he wants to fall into. Uh, better to just try and get other people to get the tapes. Thank you. Camelot's in the chat says, so glad Mage is here. El Camelot. <laughs> I, I got a question about this. So is it she technically was a prostitute? We know that. We don't know. But okay. I mean, that's all that the lawsuit alleges of her. Okay. Well, she was... has referred to Diddy before as her favorite person, though. So it seems like she had a thing for Diddy, but is also 50 Cent's baby mama. And Daddy... that's that might be where 50 Cent's beef with Diddy originated. I was trying to explain to Mary earlier. Daphne Joy was like one of the original Instagram thoughts, kind of. Like not yeah, to be rude with the her. label, but she was a she was an Instagram model before Instagram modeling became something that uh, everyone could do. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, back I, in the day, everyone could do it. But uh, uh, that's kind of the joke. But the the <laughs> point being that it was like it was like a long time ago, well over a decade ago now. I yeah, I mean, I would have thought that was Kim Kardashian, but but she's I but she's you. kind of bigger than Instagram. She's like. She was already famous before Instagram. But was, was she a thing. even famous for other than being Fifty Cent's baby no, mom? No, Kim Kardashian is bigger than Instagram. Oh, I mean Daphne Joy. She's not. She's known for being uh, for I, just being an orbiter. Yes. Of yeah. famous people. Yeah. Uh, most likely, there's like the there's like the Instagram to like athleisure le clothing line pipeline. Yeah. Where they're just like, I'm now selling this. You yeah. Know? Also, it's uh, it's not stigmatized to be a sex worker anymore. Somebody okay, so somebody pointed out yesterday when we were talking about the Drea De Mateo thing. They were saying she's not a she's not a, a online a online prostitute. She's an online stripper. They're saying it's not the same thing. Well, that's like you're yeah, splitting pornographer hairs. isn't a prostitute, even though yeah. they're being paid for sex. Like it, it, like I have no idea. To me, it's like isn't the same thing. If you're making money for sex of some sort, it, I mean. It's the same difference to me and most normal people. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Who the hell did I call fat? I didn't call anyone fat. I called, you know, me mm -hmm. fat. I call you fat. I'll call Mange fat. Okay. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Who did I call fat? All right. But uh, online stripper then. That's what it is. She's an online stripper. But yeah, so so this stuff is going on. Again, I, like I said, 50 Cent, it's so weird. There was also a tweet that was going around that I retweeted yesterday. Says like, so let me get, like Dave Smith is like, so it's 2024 and you're telling me Suge Knight was the good guy? What a year to be alive. <laughs> like, Suge Knight was the definition of the evil rap mogul for decades. He's literally, in, he has a podcast from jail that he does. Um, one of the defendants in the lawsuit is Lucian Grange, the CEO of Universal Music Group. And now everyone is posting pictures of Lucian Grange, this huge music producer or music executive, I guess, with like Taylor Swift or Justin Bieber. Hmm. And they're basically trying to imply that Taylor Swift or Justin Bieber are victims or perpetrators in this Illuminati cult. And it really is one of these of things. Um, it's one of these things now where all you have to do is say, I read I read up, I did my research, which means you read Trust some me, old. Trust me, bro. And then, and then no, all you do, no. you do, there's a diabolical tactic. You post two pictures of people next to each other and it's all being exposed. Yeah. yeah, all right. yeah. Nothing's being exposed ever. Nothing is being like at, when nothing somebody, is collapsing. When somebody says like breaking news, it's the least breaking news you've ever seen in your entire life. If it's got the red flashing like siren emoji, right, 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 it's right, the right, least right. important tweet you've ever yeah. seen in your entire life. Yeah, they're like many are saying that Justin Bieber was the victim, uh, like a child victim of Lucian Grange's sex parties with Diddy for years and he's about to expose everyone in the industry. And the source is literally just a picture of them together. And I'm just tired of seeing that type of content. 
But I think um, I, I tweeted that 50 Cent is about to like reactivate the homophobia of black men to expose Diddy <laughs> because now Diddy's sussy behavior uh, toward other men is being posted everywhere. I do want to know what you think about his socks though, or his, his outfit here. Thoughts? Whack. Thoughts? What was he thinking when he, when he put this on in the morning? I don't yeah. understand. Yeah, no. Um, let's react to some of Diddy's sus moments. Let me get, pull it up here. I had it. Make sure that it's not. Uh, all right. So, someone clipped together a bunch of Diddy's sus moments. Here we go, guys. We're not going to watch 14 minutes of this, but the fact that there's, Why not, four, hey? the fact that there's 14 minutes of it is kind of uh, <laughs> crazy. In I'm like, all you need to know. You feel me? He like playing. I was the president for shit. Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, daddy. What's you putting in that work. It's enough. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. You got you it. You look beautiful. It was a I great move. Out. Gay. Yeah. Mr. Lee. Yeah, I love this drink. Where you put my bag? I like yeah. when you like this, daddy. Yeah, yeah. Where you put my bag? Daddy, yeah, I like when you when oh, you right scrambling here, right and here. scraping no, for no, shit. No, 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 no. I, got I like that. Shit. You know, I'll be practicing. I got yeah. that. Look, look back me? on where I became. Mm. Did you miss me though? Mm. For real, because we, I'm saying, miss, it seems like a thing. I miss his birthday with party, Puff, man. man I miss but I'm talking about for you. your birthday. Huh? Why won't you party with me for your birthday, man? I'm, I, yo, this is all stuff that he knows is being recorded too. Party, mm. No, but me and you ain't never really party. You know what I'm saying? So I was oh, my God. God. <laughs> Why is he wearing? Is he recording an emo album? What is going on? Oh my god. Actually, looks like he's doing an Andre 3000 impression here. <laughs> he's feeling himself in that Yo, wig. Toronto, we come to your city. Atlanta. Uh. Dallas. Play whatever you want to play, baby. Just here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay. What is this? I, I wonder if somebody cut this, this in there. <laughs> what is this? Okay. All right. Oh my God. Yeah. And then like one day they'll be like, we had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Who could have seen all of this coming? Who seen all of this coming? We have no uh, idea that Diddy was sus. Look, uh, with Fifty Cent, a lot of it is like I feel like if he's gonna if he's gonna try to talk about stuff like this, and somebody like Diddy has been involved with this many people, then a lot of people are gonna try and stop Fifty Cent from putting something like this out if it damages the reputation of other people. Oh, um, also since the Quiet on Set doc came out, people are trying to make connections between Dan Schneider from Nickelodeon and Diddy, and they found this clip of Diddy doing a cameo in All That oh, with my God. the kids on All That. Yep, here we go. Involved some weird themes. Hey, Diddy. You gotta go to the start of the like clip. Like, what is this? And he's still sound asleep. What are we gonna do? I don't know. You know, in situations like this, yes, I always ask myself, what would P. Diddy do? Oh, what would P. Diddy do? No, I don't know. Hey, let's ask him. Did he do it? <laughs> let's ask him. P. Diddy? What's up? We can't wake up Shane. Try symbols? <laughs> what about sour milk? Didn't work. Tell you what. Take this toy helicopter. Put it down his pants. Oh my god. What? Didn't work. He's still asleep. Try this. Jellar, <laughs> by all means. 
I'm picturing Dan Schneider back there with like one headphone on, just laughing his ass off. How did this go yeah. to air? That's yeah. crazy. Uh, Aaron P said, "P Diddy is P Diddlin." Mm. Uh, all of the the people who have taken the photos of Jim Carrey as the Riddler and turned him into the Diddler with I, I saw their, that. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Photoshop work is incredible. Yeah. Also, the ones who have turned him into the Epstein, tur- it's like half Epstein, half P Diddy. Is the Photoshop work is incredible, and I applaud all of you. I don't know. Like these, uh, do you think this is one of these stories that's going to keep to blo- uh, blowing up, or do you think it'll be one of these things where sometimes these stories happen, and it's kind of like the Me Too cases a, a couple months ago, I, where they just disappeared? I think it might go all the way back to Biggie's death. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't. Know. Where does this begin People and end? People were mentioning that they think Diddy put a hit out on Tupac and Biggie. Oh Biggie. my god, and Biggie. I do love the idea that like in court. Tupac comes out and he's a protected witness and he's been like, <laughs> yeah, he's, been, like, he's been in witness protection for 30 years working at a gas station <laughs> all of those town. sightings that people say were actually real <laughs> he's like Bigfoot yeah. John, John Malin's brought it up before but there's videos of Tupac that's uh, kind of sus I mean he kind of looks maybe gay <laughs> like there, there is like I will uh, not take this slander as a, as a lifelong Tupac fan I, look I, I'm just saying you know the tapes are there I don't, what if this is <laughs> like a whole big thing to to like corrupt uh the rap community like what if this is like a plant we'll build them all up rap music all of this you know the yeah. fashion the the idea of the rap video with all the sexy women and the gold chains and all of this and then you're just going to yank it right from out up under them like it's a big psyop like what if it's it's sad. I don't want that. I don't want that. And what's crazy is like, so one day I was like, I was doing some research what? when we were doing the, when we were doing all the, when we started doing the conspiracy videos. Thank you. Thank you. It was really interesting how little there was on the connection between the CIA and rap music. Like that, you have to go. Well, yeah. Forward. Then people are um, posting that interview of Ice Cube yeah. from months months ago and they're saying that it was recent but really he was saying this a while back before any of this happened that um people like executives in the music industry uh also have partial stake in private prisons and yep. they put violent <laughs> lyrics in rap music to promote criminal activity to fill private prisons with black they men. love Giuliani. <laughs> well, I, dude, there's a lot you could go down on this. I mean, like the whole crack epidemic, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that you, you, you look at that, you look at that. I'm not saying that's when, possible. It went from but... crack to heroin. <laughs> yeah, to, you know, you know like... that's, uh, that's the CIA. Everyone knows. I mean, and what if like all these people that like P. Diddy so, they're mu- so much are like, ah, you know, or Bad Boy Records are like, oh, now I got to be gay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I gotta be a good boy. I gotta be a good boy. <laughs> I hate that. They, they all tried to get on Death Row Records first, and then they got turned down. They're like, damn it! <laughs> this sucks! Yeah. I, I will say this will be entertainment down the road. Like, whatever comes out here, as tragic as it is, it's there's gonna be lots to, to dig into through all of this. I don't think it's gonna fade away, though, because um, they've already waived the uh, possibility of getting a settlement out of court. So it's almost yeah. definitely going to go to trial. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Let's go Super Chats. Andrew Jacobs said, how the right wins women. No perverted Super Chats. Uh, is that really how the right is supposed to win Is that it? Women? Is that the solution we've been waiting for? Mm. Shane H. Wilder said, salutations on this Good Friday to Brett, Mary, and Mr. Shane Davis. I wanted to take a second to welcome our swift conspiracy theorist, Sir Renko, home as he is entering the church at the Easter Vigil. Well, congrats, congrats to Serenco Productions. I don't know if he's in the chat right now, but that's awesome. Uh, Ozhead said, "Mange dumpster fire, Davis. Let's go." <laughs> Let's do two more. Uh, Hendon Schneely said, "Don't mess this up, Shane. Be the real, be the real deal. The real deal. <laughs> All right, I gotta bring it up. Bring it up. I'm cool with goth people." I have no problem with goth people. You don't have a problem with goth people? I I wear black every day, but I'm not goth. How are you with goth people? I don't like them. What? Yeah, I mean, since you you asked. Wait, what? (laughs) 
<laughs> well, since I, it, I, I think it's a phase. I don't think it's real. <laughs> I mean, it's just a phase, you don't right? Think it's the real deal. No, it's not the real deal. D I L L F. You wooden shot. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's the real deal. It's just a phase that you go through. I'm not seeing you... Woden shot in the chat. Yeah, uh, I was expecting yeah. to see him in there. I'm not yeah, seeing nah, him. He's... Uh, I like to see uh, whenever I show up. Uh, so sometimes, even if I'm, I'm not with you guys on Friday, I will show up in the chat and then uh, have my words with the people in the chat. I'm not seeing Woden shot, but if he is there, um, say hi. No, he, he is. I, I see this. Is okay. there? All right. Uh, I'm having a harder time following it while, I, while I'm doing this. But yes, so no, not a fan of, of goth people. Any yeah. particular reason? Uh, I don't know. They just. I don't like them. It's the black lipstick, right? Something. I don't know. The it's grease better. paint. The grease paint is gross. Honestly, it's better that if you just don't have a reason. You're just like. I, I mean, don't I, really, I don't really have a reason. No. It's perfect. So you've uh. never shopped at Hot Topic? Yeah, I have. It doesn't make, All you, right. it doesn't make you goth. It's like the first Scream movie when he's like, it's a lot scarier when there's no motive, Sydney. It's cooler if you don't, if you just like him for no, dislike him for no reason. Um, we got a $20 from Ryan Blue Thunder. Tropic Thunder called all this in 2008 with Al Pacino's booty sweat. We you know that they were talking about um, uh, Tropic Thunder 2 and how all the people in it would love to still make it. Nobody like nobody who was involved in that movie um, is ashamed of it or complains. Or, or but like, the, the executives don't want to make it. Yeah, the executives no. like, likely don't want to make it. But the people who are all in it are all on board and would make a second one. I, Even Robert Downey Jr. would I, do it. I, I think I heard an interview with him and maybe Joe Rogan. They were talking about it. But he's like, how in the hell has he not been canceled for that? He's, he gets a free pass. He's just people. They love him. They love him for that role. Wait, Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. But like that's because he's like a crazy vegan climate activist. No, they no. The, no I'm saying like that because he wears blackface in the movie. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't get in trouble for he it. He doesn't because, get in trouble for it because now he's a crazy vegan climate activist. No, but also yeah. like no black people come out and and complain about it. They 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 yeah. love that. They love his character. But that's not who would cancel him. It would be like white middle-aged male activist yeah. i mean it's just so weird like nobody at, during or like the gen whole, z yeah the, nowhere during like when they the try to cancel eminem yes. yeah 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 for like for like the least offensive song he ever made <laughs> wait what song uh it was for the one with rihanna oh that one because yeah. they said it like romanticizes abuse yeah. whereas like most of his other music like li like the cover of his original albums is him dumping Kim's body. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, on a scale of what's bad, what's worse, <laughs> Who's domestic gonna tell abuse them? or actually killing your, your partner? That's uh, It goes up both ways. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on then, Mary. What the hell's going on with Rebel Wilson? You might have to explain to some people, but some people might not know who Rebel Wilson is, perhaps. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we have talked about Rebel Wilson before. We have. Um, yeah, Rebel Wilson has made some pretty disturbing allegations against an actor, Sasha Baron Cohen, who she previously talked about without naming him, she's putting out a new memoir called Rebel Rising. And in this memoir, she details the horrible experience she had working with him on the Brothers Grimsby back in 2016, I believe. Uh, so here was her experience written down. She writes, she's not about canceling anybody, but sharing her experience to help other women feel empowered to speak up. In I'm case Me Too didn't already. in case Me Too didn't do that for women already. So Rebel Wilson and Sasha Baron Cohen met at a dinner party in 2013 and he asked her to play his girlfriend in the Brothers Grimsby and it's one that he co wrote, starred and produced in. She writes, it felt like every time I would speak to him, he'd mentioned that he wanted me to go naked in a future scene. I was like, ha ha, I don't do nudity, Sasha. One day while filming at a soccer stadium in Cape Town, she writes, SBC summons me via a production assistant saying that I'm needed to film an additional scene. Okay, well, we're gonna film this extra scene. Then he pulls his pants down SBC says, very matter-of-factly, okay, now I want you to stick your finger up my ass. And I, I'm like, what? Wh no. And <laughs> I was now scared. I wanted to get out of there, so I finally compromised. I slapped him on the ass and improvised a few lines as the character. Sasha Baron Cohen vehemently denies ever saying that. 
mistreating Rebel Wilson or pressuring her to go naked. Uh, His rep said in a statement, while we appreciate the importance of speaking out, these demonstrably false claims are directly contradicted by extensive detailed evidence, including contemporary, co contemporaneous documents, film footage, and eyewitness accounts from those present before, during, and after production. I was going to say, there has to be evidence of it, right? If the scene was filmed, then it's sitting in a, it's sitting in a studio somewhere. Maybe they deleted the... Do they delete the, the extra? You just footage? know that it's also it's also like a weird form of fat shaming. You know that he wanted her to do the scene naked because you know he wanted her to do it because she was fat at that yeah, time. Yeah, in, in case you guys don't know, Rebel Wilson was notoriously the character Fat Amy in yeah. Pitch Perfect, and she was contractually obligated to be fat because that was it was okay to joke about fat people back then. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, now, got, she, no got the, she got out while the getting was good because she lost the weight. Right? Yeah, she lost the weight. Then she got actually a lot of, uh, of pushback for that. Yep. They were saying that same with Adele. She was stealing representation from fat women for becoming skinny, yeah. even though she wanted to be skinny for a long time. She just had to be fat for her job. Yep. Um, but yeah, she she previously tweeted about Sasha Baron Cohen uh, back in 2017. So like right in the middle of Me Too. Um, we got a twenty dollar from here. Aaron P. He said, Mary, a.k.a. Ghost Girl, is judging the goths for no reason and causing a divide. I'm in support of the goths and the ghosts getting along and not talking shit about each other. For shame, Mary, for shame. Yeah. You have been shamed. Yeah. I mean, I like emo um, and scene people, not goth people. Yeah. Goths it's don't have friends anyways. They just have ghosts. Uh, anyway, I actually, this sounds like something Sasha would do. You like I, I okay Absolutely. that said it's believe that doesn't mean it's true like th we're in this era where people just believe whatever women say even if there are tapes it, it, it i don't think it matters i wonder what those improvised lines were that's what i want to know i, I never know watched the, this movie. i want to know what i want to know what the improvised lines were that she came up with and then i wanted to read from her original posts about this because they were a little bit different she said, a male star in a position of power asked me to go into a room with him and then asked me repeatedly to stick my finger up his ass. All whilst his male friends tried to film the incident on their iPhones and laughed. I repeatedly said no and eventually got out of the room. Later, I was threatened by one of the star's representatives to be nice and support the male star. I refused. The whole thing was disgusting. I've told hundreds of people in the industry the story in more graphic detail, basically to warn them off this individual. So she didn't originally make it sound like this was on a film set. Yeah. Um, in a professional environment. Like it was just some random encounter. You know what? I, I cracked the case. I know what happened. What happened? He asked for her to stick her finger up his ass because she had fat fingers. That could be it? I think it's that simple. I think he did it. That does need to be mentioned. Yeah. She had fat fingers. It's relevant. She, it's relevant. Yeah. Fat yeah. fingers. Yep. Yeah. We like need up. context. <laughs> she had fat fingers. <laughs> He's, you know, he's known for that type of comedy, so it's it's completely believable. Yeah. It's not like it's not like they're saying this about uh, uh, about some random actor who's never done anything like this. He's ran out in front of nude in front of people before. I mean, for outtakes and stuff yeah. of Borat and Bruno. I, I, I this sounds believable. He went I, to CPAC in a KKK costume. I, yeah. I what mean, was the thing he did with Giuliani in his last movie? What, what, what was that? Were you like, uh, do you remember that? Somebody in the chat, did somebody in the chat mention this? Yeah, I vaguely remember it. He did but something where he made Giuliani look really, really bad. They were like trying to trap him into this situation where he Make was him look inviting... like he was talking to an underage girl or something like that. I don't even know if it was that bad. I think they just... Yeah, okay, somebody says he tried to frame him for an underage sex sting. Yeah, well, but like, was that planned between them? There's no way. I mean, what's weird is like, I wonder if Giuliani would have been. Remember, like, Giuliani randomly went on like the Masked Singer. Yes. <laughs> and then got like, like people like left because people are such babies. They're like, eh. was like, it because of like the... some like one of the uh, one of the judges was like, oh my god, really, Rudy <laughs> Giuliani? <laughs> and then they left. And then they left. But was it because? Um... Because of the Sasha Baron Cohen? No, it's because he, because he's a Republican because he knows Thing? Trump. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, the, have you ever seen the Ali G? I'm pretty sure it's Ali G, where he tried to do an interview with Trump and Trump just kind of walked out like he knew right away this was a thing. not gonna. Yeah, yeah. Th now this is we old call that footage. we call this media literacy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's actual media literacy. Trump's like, yeah, there's no way this is going well. You can't get Trump on like punked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've got the compliment of the century right here. Ozhead says bread is more mange than mange right now. Oh my God! Like, <laughs> woo! Here we go, guys. <laughs> Everybody's like, come on. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I've got you know, everybody's can can uh, pull off a little mange now and then, right? Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to mention this bizarre headline from her memoir. Rebel Wilson says she lost her virginity at 35 and wants to take the pressure off of other late bloomers by sharing her story. What'd she lose her virginity to? A uh, Cheeto, like at 35? No, like, she's, she's skinny now. So at 35, she's not, she's not fat She anymore. lost the weight. She lost the weight. But, I mean, it's not like that was stopping her. She's also her. gay, so she lost her virginity, she lost her virginity to a woman. So. Well, I don't know. I haven't read the, yeah. the memoir, but... Yeah, she she said people can wait till they're ready or wait till they're a bit more mature. And I think that could be a positive message. You obviously don't have to wait until you're in your 30s like me, but you shouldn't feel pressure as a young person. I remember there was uh, an episode of like, what was it? This show where this this girl, she brings her, she's going and interviewing like um, gynecologist for her daughter. And she's talking about like, how would you feel about you know, like talking about issues like sex. It's like, oh, I feel very comfortable, especially if the reason you've waited so long to have sex is because of a trauma response. She goes, no, it's not for me. It's for my for my kid. And that actress was like in her 40s at the time. So they're like making a joke out of it even then uh, to tell you something like that 35 is a it's a long time to wait. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh... But if she's never been married, uh, also maybe if she'd gotten, if she'd been married, that wouldn't have happened, but she's focused on her career. All this other stuff. I, it doesn't say. Somebody asked if she lost her virginity to a man or a woman. In this, I guess it was Presumably over a decade a ago. Presumably a woman, given that she's married. No, to this was a, like a decade ago. So she had dated men. Or no, so. she's engaged to a woman. Yes. Currently. Yes. Uh, and, and they that had really a matter child via surrogate. So I wonder who the father is. Yes. So yeah, uh, it's uh, that's that's a bit of a weird one, and it's probably far from the norm in Hollywood. Mm. Waiting till thirty-five. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. But I guess she was able to avoid a lot of other bad situations. Yeah. It, actually, if anything, <laughs> it probably result. saved her from a lot of like, she's like, but I never had to go on a date with Harvey Weinstein either. So I've got that going for me. Harvey would hear like, oh, you're a lesbian? Oh, okay. You can go. Yeah. yeah <laughs> it's yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So oh, somebody says Pete Davidson is the father. <laughs> They're saying that like Pete Davidson is about to swoop in and date Gypsy Rose Blanchard. That's that. that guy. Well, they were also saying like they were showing pictures of Kate Middleton with Pete Davidson. No, no, yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> when, when she when she hadn't turned up yet, there were like pictures of her strolling with Pete Davidson, done with really really good Photoshop. With with this situation here, I think it what it ultimately highlights is that what they do isn't normal so don't let them try and talk to you like they live normal lives the fact that this situation happened at all and that it wasn't like front page news the next day just shows you how weird things get in hollywood anyways yeah this was kind of just a headline that popped up and then disappeared because we've already heard crazier things a thousand times over yeah one of the saddest things that I heard recently was, you remember when the, the guy like self-immolated because of um, Palestine? Palestine? They showed like the effect it had on the news cycle and it was just nothing. Just a blip. Yeah. It was literally just, it was what like somehow seeing the map yeah. was more depressing than what that actually That discourse happened. lasted for like 48 hours maybe. Yeah, a day. I'm, the thing that bothers me about this that we're not really talking about is like, so she basically saved this sort of Me Too cancellation thing, if you want to call it that. I, I still can't really get a read on if that's what she's trying to do for monetizing a book. Yep. It's the trauma to, like to book it, pipeline. Yes. Yeah. If it was that big of a deal, say it then, not when you need to get news on your book. I like it, the opportunist type mentality here. It's like, I can't take it serious. I don't even care if it really happened. I don't care if it really traumatized her. She's just trying to bank off of I mean, it. you can say that you just want to screw over this person that you're mad at instead of saying that it's because you want to empower women. Yeah. Like okay, so that's even more annoying. So uh, 
it's one thing to be like to not report it to the cops, but it's another thing then to also have the tweet that says, if this helps another woman from not being victimized and also helps me sell a couple of extra books, well, I would rather it. I would rather <laughs> one of these women come out and be like, you know what? If this helps me sell one extra book, then I'm gonna tell my story. It doesn't mean it has to be a lie. Yeah. Just be honest that like, look, I'm trying to sell copy here. Here's the other thing. How boring is this book that this is what you're using to market it? Yes. This is the uh, one highlight. This is the, this is the this is the reason to crack open the book. Like, uh. like what chapter is the butt stuff on? <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! And, and there's, and no, at best there's no crime. This there's a, no crime here. The fact that other people were recording it, it seems like more of a practical joke. Yeah. I mean, I, that part, it doesn't seem like it's some sort of sexual gratification thing that he was looking for. It seemed like, I don't know. I've, I've watched the behind the scenes on Bruno and stuff. Like, there's some crazy stuff that never makes it into those films. Uh, either the camera gets dropped or something. I mean, there's just crazy stuff this guy does. I, I, yeah, makes I've, sense. If, if it was just them one-on-one -on -one and not people recording it, I'd be like, yeah, okay, that's creepy. I, I'm not giving it a pass or anything because that's what people were going to say. And never would Mange ask a fat chick to shove a finger up his butt. But if I was but in that position, if I was in that position, she, uh, she, she would be skinnier than me. That's the rule has to be one pound skinnier than me at least at least at one least pound. one that's at the least standard one. that's the standard that's the standard okay <laughs> all right let's go to super chats oz, guys and we're and once we're through we're just gonna hang out till till five oz had said hi comics gate bro dogs in the chat um i gotta i hang on bro dogs bro dogs bro dogs all right there we go <laughs> got it apple pits said we want mary on ballers fact Mm. I would have a fun time watching Mary respond to the degeneracy. It's not that degeneracy. But would Mary have fun responding Mary have, to the degeneracy? Mary would have a great time. I think you would have fun. At least, like, yeah. for, like, I mean, you're not going to want to be there Mary, for four hours. honestly, but, do uh, I... Four do, hours is an automatic no. Yes. <laughs> uh, Mary, I, I, I look like a good time. Um, I can't tell if I'm supposed to, like, make eye contact with the necklace. Yes, yes. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No thanks. Um, Dipsy Doodle said Shane Davis is my favorite internet personality. Shane is hilarious and has the best alter ego, Mange. I don't know who Shane is. We only have Mange here today. Yeah, yeah. I don't know who. Let's Shane do two is. more. Mister Self Destruct said, "Who nine lives matter?" Woo! Yeah. Oh, not not woo. I guess both. I don't know. <laughs> um. Valdez D. Frank said, "Make Mange great again." Yes. Yeah. Exactly. We're, we're, we're but you're already great, mm -hmm. right? But All right. Be epic. All right, Mary. Let's talk <laughs> about the knockout game because I I already screwed this up earlier. I said Beverly Frankel. It's not Beverly it's Frankel. Beth, it's Bethany. Yeah, there are tons of women mm. who live in New York City that are making TikToks claiming that a random assailant is going around punching them in the face and yeah. running off into the distance. And they're in very, very close quarters. It's like a two square mile radius that all of these women are saying they're just randomly getting sucker punched. And as Brett taught me yesterday, this is the knockout game. Yeah, I had to explain to Mary what the knockout game was. You know, so if you don't know, uh, I'll explain it to you via Wikipedia if this okay. is new to you. So the <laughs> knockout game is one of the names given in the United States for assault in which a person with others acting as an accomplice or lookout attempts to make an unsuspecting person uh, lose consciousness with a single sucker punch. The assaults have similarities to the happy slapping trend seen in Europe in which camera phones are used to record assaults. Other names given to these type of uh, assaults are knockout, knockout king, Point them, point them out, knock them out, and polar bearing, which is of course the racist one where you just you do it against white people. Got it. Yeah. Polar well, bear hunting. All of the women happen to be white anyway. So. Coincidence? It Coincidence? I think not. Who knows? Yeah, this person tweeted uh, with a bunch of examples saying there are a bunch of women getting punched in the face in NYC all over TikTok. I don't know if it's all the same guys. Some of the stories seem slightly different, but some of them seem similar. So it could be a gang 
operating like maybe they just didn't like Bethany Frankel and they this. looked for a bunch of women and like what maybe what it was they all what if they all looked like Bethany Frankel and they just kept hitting women that look like Bethany Frankel until they found her guys Bethany Frankel is one of the real housewives and she claims that this also happened to her mm -hmm. she commented on one of the girls videos and said this is insane because this happened to me a few months ago but I was embarrassed to say uh, I was on the UWS Insane. I was taking video of a bakery. So he just saw that she was filming something on the street and yep. was like, you're going down, bitch. A bakery? <laughs> Poor no. Bethany, right? Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I guess she she didn't take the opportunity to use it for clout. A lot time. of people, a lot of people aren't going to have a lot of sympathy. Let's look at the videos. Yeah, let's uh, let's look at the videos. We got a bunch of them here. I want to so, see what they say. You guys, I let me see if I can make. It you guys, you I was guys, just walking, you guys, and a man came up and punched me in the face. Oh my god, it hurts so bad. <laughs> I can't even talk. <laughs> Literally, I fell to the ground. I'm sorry. And now I'm sorry. He's like, it's forming, and I'm like, I'm sorry. The way she's talking is funny because. You know, the, oh face. my god, yeah. Oh, no. You guys! I was literally like leaving class. I turned the corner and I was looking down and I was looking at my phone and like texting. And then out of nowhere, this man just came up and hit me in the face. I'm like actually in shock right now. Okay. okay. I literally just got punched by some man on the sidewalk. He goes, sorry, and then punches me in the head. Holy fuck. He said sorry oh, first, God. though, so it's okay, right? Well, he he yeah, did no. it ahead of time. So, last week, I was assaulted in New York City, as you can kind of see here with my black eye. If you oh, know me, God. you know that this isn't really something I would typically publicly talk about, but I just feel like this is something that women need to be more aware of. I was on my way to work, and it was probably 10 a.m., and as I was crossing the street, a man looked at me, and within a split second, pointed two fingers at me in a gun symbol, and then slammed a bag plastic bag full of god knows what down on my face from about a foot away and i fell onto the ground i'm assuming the man just walked or ran off i wasn't really in a state to know what was going on the bag was so heavy that it felt like bottles or cans but i didn't ever look to see what was in it i'm so grateful that there was so okay he's like i got one more here here <laughs> oh that was the first girl um mm -hmm. but yeah i am going to the hospital i feel like i'm probably oh my god it looks, it looks like i have a fucking double horn um it does honestly that's kind of fitting anyway um yeah i was just walking on the sidewalk and my head was down and i was like looking at my phone just sending an email but there was so much room on the sidewalk and like literally nobody was around and i guess this man i don't know if he punched me or if he owed me i literally passed out <laughs> so i don't really remember but i think he just was really mad that my head was down he was walking a dog so he took it upon himself to body check me and let me know to be conscious of my surroundings which now i fucking will be and then i fell to the ground and i like literally blacked out for a second but then i got up and he was screaming at me like screaming at me and i was just like scared so i literally just ran away and then i was like wait am i crazy like what the fuck just happened and then i was like oh oh okay cool but yeah i'm going to just urgent care i'm it's that okay she she did it so what she's saying is like he was just trying to help her he just wanted to make her more aware of her surroundings. Ma'am, you, you need to be conscious of your surroundings. I have a dog. What if you ran into my dog? Who wants to guess if it was a pit bull? <laughs> so we're, we were talking about this before. Moranis, is it? Rick, Rick Moranis. Yep, this happened had happened to him a couple of years really? ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is like right after. So Rick Moranis had been retired from acting for decades. And then he finally gets started being seen in the public eye again. And then like a week later, he just gets decked. Then he just right. middle of, and then disappeared again. Yeah, yeah. I can't blame him. Yeah. Look, all of these tweets are saying that you know someone should step in, someone should help these women, and then Tell that to in Daniel response, Penny. of course, they're posting the picture of Daniel Penny. The discourse is just so predictable. I, I'm not interested anymore. <laughs> I mean, obviously the game's fucked up, right? Like, but. Is you know, with that said, it's not going to hurt for people not to stare at your phones when you're walking. I mean, New Yorkers have an, a, a type of walking past one another and not acknowledging anybody. Like, they're in the zone anyways. Cell phones added to it. It's kind of like people walk out into a bus on their, fucking around with their cell phone with earbuds. And it, it's like maybe, like, you're not going to get hit that hard if you see it if you're aware of it your body will brace a little bit right 
like or maybe you'll dodge it who the hell knows but like it, it's a stupid game I, look it's funny i'm not saying it's funny but let's just say it's, it's you know, the way that she was talking in the first video it just made me laugh because she was like you guys i just got punched in the face like, yeah. like uh, all women in new york city talk like that there are all sorts <laughs> of videos where like the like somebody's like on their phone and they like walk off of like a like a uh, a sewer grade or yeah, something. Yeah, like, or, or I they mean, walk like, in, like they walk off like a pier into like mm -hmm. the water. Yeah. Right, we got a twenty dollar from Aaron P. He said, How did Mary and Brett start this podcast together? Like how did you guys meet? Are you two step siblings or something? Well what happened was I was oh, I was did, did she didn't get stuck in the dryer, did she? she I, no. I got kidnapped <laughs> I got kidnapped and I got just dropped into the studio one day. And uh, and then Mary got kidnapped and dropped into the studio. Tim knocked you out. Yes, and then in he the knocked street. me out in the streets of New York City, <laughs> and he kidnapped me and he and he brought me up here and he said, "Make a podcast." He, he was going around in a van with yes. this big net, and yeah. he was netting. He netted you and took you into the van and brought you here. That's exactly what happened. No, no, what happened was. Um, so this podcast gets, assuming this is a serious question and, and, and they're not actually asking if we're step siblings uh, or not. Uh, I started the, the podcast in like November of 2021. The site was created. We didn't do our first episode until December of that year. So it was almost 2022. And then did uh, some episodes with somebody out uh, with Miracle who used to work here and other guests from around the company would come in. It wasn't on YouTube at that time except for segments. And Mary came in in April. April, April so, 2022. Uh, so almost two years now. Uh, and then we went live in May. Yeah. Or, yeah, in May. May. Uh, and we've been doing that ever since. And it was just, uh, it's evolved since then. But uh, it just kind of happened. Yeah, we've reacted to old episodes. Um, I think on episode 500 we did that. So. Well, I will never do that again. You guys I, should go mm. go watch that after the stream is over. Um, so, <laughs> so yes. Uh, but yeah, as far as uh, this stuff, uh, Bethany having it happen to Bethany Frankel, I just wonder if somebody like somebody who just really doesn't like Bethany Frankel is like. <laughs> Look, all these women are getting punched in the face. Now I've got an excuse. <laughs> Everyone is really mad at Tim right now. Someone named Timothy Poole. He tweeted, I think it's funny that women in NYC are getting punched in the face. This has mm. 7.5 million views. And everyone's just really mad at Tim right now. Hmm. Um, probably not realizing that he meant this in jest. Yes. Or he didn't. I don't know. I didn't ask him. Maybe we should ask I've him. never punched a woman on the street in his presence, so I don't know what his reaction would be. Here's the... If the women <laughs> didn't make a funny video about it, like, you know what I mean? Like Then no one would, would be laughing. No one <laughs> would be laughing. I mean... The video is what's funny. I don't... Like, obviously, it's not funny that they got assaulted um another person tweeted about this saying women are speculating on tiktok that the punching attacks in nyc are part of a coordinated action by incels yeah that's what it is yeah the and incels. then she replied anyone got any intel from 4chan anybody got intel on the incels <laughs> intel on the incels <laughs> um uh, i'm on intel incel duty i'm on incel <laughs> intel duty guys yeah, I don't think so. I'm highly doubting. No, but that. here's here's the thing. This is exactly what Hollywood would do, right? So, uh, the they show would think the show Blue Bloods actually did an episode on the on, on the, knockout the knockout game, game in the early seasons uh -huh. of the show. But they have a because this is back in like 2010, so you were still allowed to talk about these things. Yeah, and they actually have a discourse where they go back and forth on whether this is a hate crime or not. Uh, and they're like, there's no mention of race. He goes, well, if it walks like a duck and it talks like a duck, maybe it's a duck, right? Uh, but nowadays, if they did this, it would be kind of like in the Batman where they made the Riddler like the leader of like a group of incels. He had 500 followers this is on a forum. <laughs> this is exactly what would happen if they did a television show now where they did the where they did an episode on the, the knockout game. It would be a bunch of guys who are mad at women. So I'm just going to go. They're like, I watched that Sex in the City reboot boot and I just had to go knock a bunch of bitches out on the street look this isn't incels it's not incels it's the fact that New York City obviously lets criminals out yep. without bail and there are tons of schizophrenic homeless people walking around the city just wreaking havoc on society maybe it's the weather and yes it's ironic that the women voted for the policies yeah 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 like well, whatever th there is something to be said they're all hit in the front of the face right yeah. But yeah. none of them can describe the person that hit them. Yeah, like, they all I mean, go out of their way like, to I'm, not I'm just saying them. they 
probably should look up from their phone. I more. mean, to be I, fair, I think like, the whole world most could look people, up from their phone more. Do you think? Well, do you think they're lying? No, I don't. don't I, I think they literally were walking and looking at their phone, and like, like they can't even identify the person. I think like, if they had a description um, and the assailant was black, they definitely wouldn't say something. Correct. Or they wouldn't mention that. Correct. Obviously, but. Most people, like, in situations like that, they just have zero recall anyway because of the adrenaline. And no situational awareness anyways because yeah, yeah. you're walking around sitting on your phone. Right. Yeah. I, like, I wonder if it's just maybe New York City just pisses people off because uh, does, the, does, <laughs> does the knockout game have – there's a ton of homeless people in L.A., Mm -hmm. Like, do the homeless people? I'm there, sure similar things happen there, in LA. You just have to do like the but, skip game where you just don't stand on the step on the crack needle, right? In LA, there's more space. Yeah. You know, like people aren't as cramped together, and anxiety is lower probably because they have weed and you know. And the weather's nicer. And the weather the is nicer. nicer. Uh, they, they get to get like free needles and stuff, and oh, hang man. out in Starbucks bathrooms. Yeah, um, I, I think John Durham says Brett watches a lot of Boomer TV for a millennial. I didn't watch uh, Sex in the City. I was just making a point there. You're talking about Blue Bloods. Oh yes, I do watch a lot of Boomer TV yeah. for uh, for a millennial. I, I, <laughs> I do so proudly. Yeah, I, I refuse to apologize <laughs> for that. Uh, I don't um, know. Is it funny? Is it funny that they're getting punched in the face? I wouldn't go that far. Would you far. call it funny? I think that it's it's one of these things where because of the age of the internet, like it's like you said earlier, it's the reaction videos that has drawn the the attention of it. If these were just Twitter posts that were just typed, I don't think that they would have the same impact. Yeah. And this discussion should have been happening years ago because this game is not new. No. no how no, do you know no. that it's coordinated? How do you know that it's planned exactly. and there are you just don't. that it's not just some schizo homeless guy? Yep. There are plenty of them in, in that city <laughs> that are walking around doing stuff like this. I, I highly doubt that it's a coordinated attack of any kind. Um, but yeah, like, it's yes, it's ironic that these women are all feminists and they probably all, uh, you know, advocate for gun control and everything like that. The irony doesn't entertain me anymore. Does, does Beth, do you think <laughs> Bethany Frankel will see justice? Will she actually get her Bethany criminal Frankel. caught? She didn't post any uh, proof that she got punched, though. Yeah, she just kind of jumped just in on the in. bandwagon. And I don't said, know. Oh, that happened that's to even, too, that's even like, worse somehow. Hey, yeah, me, no, it me is too. Worse, actually. She's like, I yeah. need some attention out yeah, of yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that's actually, that's way worse. She's like, oh man. Well, I wasn't going to post about this when it didn't help me, but now that it's a topic of discussion, I suppose I can bring it up. That's way worse. The, the worst part about this, though, is that if it wasn't coordinated, and now that they're doing these videos and it's getting the attention, and the knockout game is a real thing, now it is going to be a real thing. It's going to be the real deal. Yeah, now it's going to be the real <laughs> deal. Yeah. What if they were all just running into, like, light poles? Well, yeah, we don't know. Like I mean, were... <laughs> yeah. Would you want to go to the ER and I say, know. I was I... looking at my phone? I think he ran away. <laughs> and, uh, they don't want to admit you know, it. They don't I... want to admit it. Yeah. Also, like New York is like the most surveilled place in the world. There's no, there's no videos of this stuff happening. It's not well, like the that cops was the thing anyway. when it happened to Rick Moranis. There was like video. there was a video. Yep. Like it was like bank cameras or cameras from the light poles. I mean, if they're all on the sidewalk, there should be some video. I would assume. Like they won't show anyone. No, <laughs> they no. won't show anyone. It'll just go. Un it'll go unaddressed. Yeah. Let's uh, finish these super chats. Let's do it. We'll, uh, we will hang out. Okay, um, and Erbson, not going to read that. I knew there would be at least one that wasn't going to be read. Flady1 sent a bunch of potato emojis and chickens. Um, thank you. Corey Anderson said, I would def marry the twins. It would be awesome. Why would it be awesome, though? That's the real question. Why would it be awesome? Uh, I mean, bragging rights, right? <laughs> I, You're technically sleeping with two think, women at once. I mean, um, nah, dude. If I no, I, I, I'm not trying to be crude. All right, but I'm that, glad you're not trying. To. I'm not trying to, but it's a reality of the situation. The dude could give two women an orgasm at once, every time, every time, every time, every time. Every time. God willing. I mean, like, I mean, he could hit the Guinness World Book of Records or something. Amanda, kind of. um, uh, Amantino says uh, two nagging wives. No thanks. <laughs> Technically, you're only married to say. one, but she's all the sister's always going to take your side. No, they're legally two people. 
But still, you're going to have to fight with two people because the sister's always going to take her side. True. Like, just yesterday, yeah. we were talking about the topic of the, the, the trad wife lady who said, don't involve your family in your, in your marital disputes. That's impossible for them. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They can't do that. Yeah. I mean, I thought about it. The more I thought about it, the... Two, two seats on a plane? Yeah, probably. Wow. The more I thought about it, the, the more confusing it got because I guess that, you know, like you, when you're anxious, right? Like you, your blood is pumping, you yeah. like you're sweating. Like they're both, if one of them is anxious about something, like they're both anxious, yeah. even though they both have private thoughts. It's like the weirdest thing to me. Yeah. I don't know. Freaks me out. I, I'm glad it's not me that's in that situation. Um, Spike in Madness. I'm not going to read that. Um, AJR said, woo, Mange Davis, not gay at all. Woo. <laughs> I've never been gay. Yeah, well, he, said he said that. He said that you're not no, gay at but all. He, no, but that's insinuating I'm gay. And no. Like, he he, he kind of is. <laughs> By saying know? that you're not gay? Obviously, now he's bringing the topic up if I'm gay or not. Uh, Corey Anderson said, do the twins have an OF? That's where all the money is. No, they. I, I don't think they have an OF. Uh, sadly, it probably would be where the money is for them. Yes, yeah. yes, it would. So. There was a, a top earner chick we were talking about on Baller. She had two, uh, two vaginas somehow. And she was just Did she this charge big extra for thing. both? She was a big thing. I, I don't know, but like there were like all these articles about her and how she's had kids and <laughs> thank you wait what was that um that super chat and that currency that we don't know it was uh rupees okay then i don't know what um what a thousand of that is yeah. but it's it's up there you see it yep uh oh wait where on the top of the screen i can't see i can't see it Brett, it's right there. I can see what you see. Uh, what? It's from at the who? top of the screen. From who? Top of the chat. Okay, up here. Top. Don't scroll. Move your mouse. I don't to know the top. To the top of the screen. I have literally no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know where it is on my. Okay, whatever. We'll just ignore it then. Yeah. I'm just saying that that person. It's pink, right? So they sent more than twenty dollars, right? I can't. I have no idea. But you're scroll. You're you're scrolling. You don't need to scroll. You I, need to move the. You need to move your mouse. I'm not seeing any super. You don't chats. need to scroll though. Oh, I see. You need to move it. your mouse up. Okay. I don't, <laughs> don't want to ignore the chat. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, here it is. Is that is that more than twenty dollars? Uh, okay. I that's not showing up on mine. It was there. Okay, but what did they say? Uh, they said, what's this? What you got there? What is Chain? Uh, what's the standard for business? Question mark. They're saying it's 12. $12. Uh, okay. I don't know why it's pink then. Uh, that it, happens sometimes it, with the conversion rates. That's yeah. fine. Um, so Ranko Production said, I have to head out for Liturgy of the Passion of the Lord now, but I hope you all have a blessed Good Friday. Excited to be confirmed into the church soon. Congrats, bro. Wodenshot said, hi, Brett and Mary. Good Good of you both to have invited this strange, disabled comet book artist, uh, wait, he, Shane Davis, he, back to your show. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was a super chat? Yes. From Wodenshot? Yes. Wodenshot. He can super chat? He can super chat. Why wouldn't he? Because he's never super chatted me a day, ever. And you've got a <laughs> video for him and everything. I don't understand this guy. We like Wodenshot here. Yeah. Corey Anderson said, Brett, are you baptized? Yes. Thank you for that answer. CG87343 said, I believe in love, but kind of have my limits. Also, that young looking woman, the hate got so intense. I'm fairly sure they split. What if one offs a guy? How can they prove which? Uh, the, the, movie, the movie scripts write themselves for all of the ways that you could do these things for for stuff like that but you wouldn't be allowed to make a movie like that anymore it would be, it would be stigma it would be there'd be stigma them. stigma around it which is too bad so that like guy, stigmatizing who they're like the only people in the world that have this also also it's fair to point out that it does suck that if they broke up because of like the all the stuff around it but they should have just not 
done their best to, I guess, not have articles written about them. Like, because it seemed like the, I guess the, they, I guess the, they probably didn't give interviews, but people found like their pictures. They probably shared photos on Facebook yeah. with family members. And then some editor at a newspaper was like, you should write about this. It's a human interest piece. It's kind of interesting. And then the rest is history. Yes. Uh, not sure said hail to the blood taters in the chat and to Mange Davis for keeping it real. Yeah. Keeping it real. Real. Pat the plumber. Uh, Wait, we did that one. Uh, a serious man said, where's Shane? All I see is mange. There is yeah. nothing but mange. Mm, nothing but mange. He also said the Holocaust, a subject right up mange's alley. Is that true? Is that true? Uh, I look. I mean, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. 200 Watt Studio said Mange is the best of us. Humanity at its peak. I agree. Yeah. This is what peak performance looks like. Yep. Take notes. J Bama fan one hot dog nation said Shane's body has always been exaggerated to me. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> Travis Perrick said Sikkim Woden shot Sikkim. I saw Woden shot in the chat finally, before, even before the super chat. Black lives or black knives said Shane's body is too. <laughs> is too what? <laughs> is too is too realistic for the Mel gaze. <laughs> Mel gaze. <laughs> okay. I'm glad you laughed. We're down to 200 watt studios. <laughs> yeah. Mange is the reiter of CG. Sheer Davis too. Yeah. How do you feel about tentacles? Oh, uh, negatively? No. <laughs> Fair enough. John Barnhill said the only real adult entertainment is your woman. Okay. There you go. Shane H. Wilder said video games cause extremism. I guess I need to up my game. Yes, I'm Catholic, but I'm not a Catholic poning demons like the protagonist of Doom. There you go. Justin said this is my first live show. How do you make them dance? My $100 super chat didn't do it. it we did. answered that for yeah, you. Yeah, it, it did do it, my friend. Uh, just took some time to mon to go through. So, for instance, we're at five crisis parties right now. And I can't see the... So, we are about 70... Roughly $70. A little bit over $70 away from another crisis party. If you'd like to make Mange dance again. 200 yeah. Watt Studio said, Lots of women went to Endgame. That was Fat Thor. It was, end game. it was the end of a 10-year Marvel run. I still think like, of that interview where he's like, what do you think of seeing your Thor ath on screen for the first time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, DC what did he even say? What did he, how did he respond? I don't even remember. I don't even remember how he, so how he responded. So many parts that stuck with me. Yeah. The Lisp. A Thor ath. DC and C said romance novels. You reckon the ladies read favorite pages on repeat? Like dudes remember cue times in movies. Yeah. Pat the plumber said the cringe is causing me physical pain. Yeah. Yeah, the cringe was particularly bad today, even though it was a skit. Mike D83 said hail mange, hail PCC, hail comics gate. Hey, hail yeah. comics gate. There you go. Wayward Ryu said, first time super chat, let's go. Anyone got the time to shill for my favorite media, Cayman Rider and Gundam? Please watch Cayman Rider build. Okay. Hmm. Corey Anderson. Oh, we already read that one. We're um, down to Quite Black Pilled said, gaming is doing fine. Helldivers 2 still rules. A lot of people are talking about Helldivers 2. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard a lot of talk about it. DCNC said, cringe of the day. Mitzi Sanderson is a gold mine of fake cringe. You'll love it, Mary. Hmm. Is that the girl in the, yeah, the, the video wedding house? Yeah. Yeah. Woden shot said, Shane Davis, when writing your comet books, is creating interesting goog eyes and bag eyes hard in this age of anti-heroes and morally gray characters. You know, characters. you know, you know I, I set forth, uh, I, I set forth, here's what's weird, uh, you know, uh, I, I put a... <laughs> You know, I, I I learned to draw so I could draw comics, right? For the mentally challenged, the illiterate that is like people like Wooden Shot. I mean, obviously he's illiterate. 
Like I, I mean, I and I draw these pictures to help him understand and process the word balloons. <laughs> the pictures. And the pictures, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I hope to God one day you can learn to spell. <laughs> characters, characters. <laughs> Morally gray characters. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Corey Anderson said, I keep hearing about Helldivers 2. Is it any good? Does it have a single player option? You have to talk to Phil. Phil has been playing it, I believe. I think it does, though. I mean, I haven't played it, but I heard. Yurishima Otaru said, Diddy is the fall guy for Mange. Everyone knows oh, it. Oh, <laughs> I, I had a feeling. <laughs> the truth is all coming it's out. It's all coming out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gab, formerly Gek812, said, Who is this feral carnival hick guest? Strangely, why am I so drawn to him? I feel like there's a different soul inside cry crying out to be free. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's 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 a joke. That's the help me, John joke. It, it's 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 you know. Yeah. I keep breaking Mary today. Yeah. You okay there? Yes. Okay. okay. Shane H. Wilder said, "Breaking news! It's a day that ends in Y. We have reporters out and will update with more information as it becomes available. We now return you to pop culture crisis already in progress." Correct. Hmm. Corey Anderson said, Outcast is awesome. Only better rap hip hop group is the Beastie Boys. Eh, like Controversial. <laughs> Beastie Boys is kind of yeah, like, no. it's not really my time. It was more my brother's time period. Yeah. I do love Outcast, but they're, they're good. Yeah. Katie B said, what do you guys think is the reason for this coming out now? This info, rumors mainly about these people, has been out for a long time. I assume this is about the Diddy stuff. Some um, of this was coming out, like I said before, off air with the Jamie Foxx stuff. Like, so, like, it, it is like this has been in the rumor mill, like, kind of like in the TikTok sphere of yeah, things. Yeah, they love to talk about stuff like this in TikTok. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that the. I know the rumors were going around before the lawsuit, but the lawsuit is covering things that happened as recently as November of. Was it, wasn't it 2023? Like yeah. November 2023. So yeah. that's all new stuff that is coming from that lawsuit. Hmm. Gab said, in response to your comment about barbecue's eating habits, he does eat people. That's regime change, regime change propaganda. Tucker Carlson interviewed Haiti's former prime minister who explained the situation well. Yeah, but that's real news, and I'm just here to talk about funny stuff that could or could not be fake. Do they mean he doesn't eat people? He, doesn't, mean he you, doesn't. He doesn't eat that people. That was like the worst typo to make because you said he does yeah. eat people. It doesn't really matter because we just had that video from like LA last week of the guy chomping down on the guy's legs. So cannibalism oh, is my God. in, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, no, it's in. That guy thought it was funny. That was horrible. Yep. K2000 said, if you think that's bad, you should see Rebel Wilson's performance in Fat Pizza. I've never heard of that, but uh, I could check it out. Hmm. Corey Anderson said, PCC has super fans based on the super chats. Would you ever have one of them as a guest? I would pick Shane, Tacti, or Bucky. I live in East Maryland. If they aren't available, I would just have to clear it with JAG. Jag. Okay. So in the military. Um, yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. Like we, no. uh, Mary says no. I <laughs> No offense. I mean, I just feel like that's a line that shouldn't be crossed. We don't we don't cross the lines here. I would want to do like a call-in show. Yeah. Like I feel like that would be a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd interview them, but you know, not You like you me. go out yeah. and go to them yes. and then you interview. <laughs> 200 Watt Studio said the last girl looks like Lady Hellboy. In uh, in the The one well, with the horn? The, the uh, one with the yeah, horn. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah, 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 I mean, she yeah, did. Yeah. Her <laughs> she forehead, did. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Shane H. Wilder said he hit her outside of a bakery. Was he like, you bought the baguette instead of the brioche? How dare you? <laughs> I actually think she was taking a selfie or whatever, a, a photo of a croissant or something on a plate, like women like to do. Yeah. And they're just on like, Instagram. oh my gosh, the dude just came up and whacked pick? I, I, that, when I When she said bakery, I'm like, I know what you were doing. I see Instagram. <laughs> okay. Jim... 
or JM director said, speaking of Boomer TV, Brett, did I hear a few episodes back that you were watching the Jesse Stone TV movies? If so, which one do you like the most? The, the best thing about the Jesse Stone TV movies is I literally couldn't tell you the difference between any of them. They're basically all the same movie. Uh, and that's what I love about them. It's kind of like you, it's literally designed to be put on as background noise. What I like about them, though, is like the crimes are always so a lot of them involve a person dying. But for the most part, it's all very local crime. And there's not a big it's not a big investigation with the FBI. Like sometimes the state police get involved. Uh, but it always comes down to like dude cheated uh, embezzlement from a company from an amount of money that would never matter on like a bigger TV show. It's like somebody stole $500,000 and that's a lot of money, but is it really something you kill someone over? They're good. They're, they're a lot of fun, but it's not something you watch to be like riveted while watching. It's really more about Tom Selleck's character is like a, he's a drinker. He's an alcoholic. Um, he's never gotten over his ex-wife and it's really more about his character than it is about the actual crimes. I literally couldn't like tell you. Like in Tulsa the, King. Kind of. No, nah, not really. Not, not really the same thing. But it's, I couldn't tell you the difference between any of them. I just know that they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, High Vulture 75 said, Mary, didn't you say a homeless guy assaulted you while you were in CA? What happened? I don't remember you sharing the details of that incident. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Actually, hmm. you Did might that be mis no, no, I never that never happened. You might be mistaking me with someone else. Um, I don't think I said anything about He's just that. trying to get you in trouble with homeless people. No, <laughs> I want homeless people to leave me alone. The rumbling said, What if one twin is conservative and the other is a leftist? Imagine the argument. It's freaking hilarious. And the, it's the head on the right that's the leftist, and it's the so head on the left that's the, that's the conservative. They both get to vote separately. <laughs> I have no idea. Huh. There's just so many questions. Blur said, She is. She is that a reference right, to you? you or yes, is... it's a reference. Okay, to me. or is that a she reference to the wire? Not, no, it's a reference. It's a thing I do oh, yeah. on on YouTube. Could have been a reference to the wire. Jake no. Martin said, "This money is Brett. Don't share it." Okay, it's for Brett. Okay, thank you. I'll keep it. <laughs> Shane H. Wilder said, "Damn it, Mary broke again." Mm. They broke you. Two hundred Watt Studio said, "Shane is for real. He's real good peoples." I I mean is uh, my fight uh, I, I'm trying to fight illiteracy by drawing pictures for people to learn to read. Write. I'm drawing pictures so people can learn to read. <laughs> That's great. That's beautiful. Um, Shane H. Wilder said, "Before I forget, I want to wish everyone a happy Easter." Yeah, happy Easter. We're gonna see you after. And one more there from I don't see you Oshead says, "Happy Easter. He is risen." Risen indeed. There you go. All right, guys, before we go, would you hit the like button on this video, please? And subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Especially uh, if you uh, if you followed Mange in here, if you followed behind him, uh, and if this is your first time watching the show, go ahead and check out some of the other segments. Hopefully we can earn a subscription from you today. Let's talk to you, because you got a bunch of stuff in the works right now, do you not? Yes, yes. And this we... is Shane, not Mange, or is it Mange, not Shane? It's... Are you gonna stay in character for this I'll part? Stay in character. Okay. <laughs> uh, Actually, right now, like uh, we're getting ready to do fulfillment on Inglorious Rex 2, which did raise a whopping 300 and I think 318 thousand dollars combined. So that is one of our biggest books at Nine Lives Comics to date. With that said, if you go to NineLivesComics.com, you can actually buy ready-made books that we do have on our website if you're new we do have inglorious rex and starlight cats up and you can order and they ship out the next day or you can go back our campaign extend now this is our next book getting ready to go to print and you'll i've get got the up here and it's in the description box yes. for everybody you can get it there this book is an awesome book about three video gamers that test out a new virtual reality game world when they log out and they come back into the real world things happen a few of them die and they start to activate as their game avatars with all their power-ups and all of that stuff but no extra lives in the real world so you can go check that out there are two books in this campaign extend level up and extend respawn so this is our next book getting ready to go to print at ninelivescomics.com if you missed out on the glorious rex 2 we will have some available 
um, later on in the year, and we will be launching in Glorious Rex 3. So we do have a newsletter that you can sign up on our website. If you go sign up for that, you'll get notification on any campaigns that we put up in the future. And again, also check out my YouTube channel, Talking and Drawing with Shane Davis. Got that here as well. If you want to look at that. Yep, so there we go. Ballers, uh, is there ballers this week? Uh, n no. This week, uh, no. This week, no. Week there, after? Yeah. Uh, next week, we'll be back on schedule. This week, between traveling and then yeah. there was some stuff. We, we, we stole your time this week. Yeah. yeah we yeah, stole your time yeah, this yeah. week. Yeah. Uh, guys, go check it out. Uh, one of the great things, especially when, like, when, when I go over there and I do ballers, they always make a point to make sure to advertise our show so that people can come and join us. And I want people to go and take a look at this. I also, the top pinned comment here is a link to Nine Lives. So if you go and back the campaign, you can get the link right there. It's not just in the description. So everyone can go find it there. Uh, we just got, we got a $50 super chat from Steve Kralik. He said, Crisis Party, get ready to dance, mange. It's oh going to happen before. Before, it's going to happen before we're done. I think there was a $20 one up there as well. Um, Aaron P. said, this is for Mary. Don't share it. May she learn not to talk shit about the goths and cause love instead of hate between them and your ghost race. Look, it, it's fair to point out that, you know, supporting your cause financially is beneficial. Like, he's he's out there lobbying for goths right now. He's putting <laughs> his money where his mouth is. Mm -hmm. Shane H. Wilder mm -hmm. said, don't forget what Monday is. Wink, wink. What is Monday? Oh, Mange and Monday. Mange and Mandy is on Monday. So we do do a show where it's Mange and Mandy Summers. That will be Monday, 530. Okay. They're saying she'll Mandy stuff. Oh, yeah. Okay. So she actually has, that's a good question. She has Super Dead 2 that's up right now and funding on Indiegogo. It has a Dale Keown cover. If you guys, um, I think it, the 30, I think it might be closing out Monday. So you only have a few days to check that out. Mandy was supposed to be here today, but there was a family emergency or uh, uh, something. So she was unable to attend. So if you guys can, please go check out Super Dead. I'm actually gonna, I've got the Indiegogo link right here. Thank you guys. Dance, dance, Mange. I got a cramp. I got a cramp, guys. I uh, I have attached. I just put posted a link in the live chat for Mandy's Indiegogo campaign. It's right there, so you can see it. And then I've got the pulled up here on the site. So yeah, shield for Mandy's stuff as well. You got yep. some other super chats there? Yes. Um, Jake Martin said this is to support the picture books to teach people how to read. A noble cause. Yeah. And I mean, if I could just get wooden shot to <laughs> learn to read, if I could just change one retarded child's life i mean with pictures and words i i would i mean that's, it was all worthwhile that's everything thing. that's amazing 200 watt studio said shane davis's extends good read and also helps with ed <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's wow. one more there shane h wilder said it's april 1st monday is april 1st hmm. okay well um then uh, Monday, we're, uh, uh, what, what could we do on Monday that was, won't be true because it'll be <laughs> April Fool's Day? Well, we're, we're not going to tell them now. So. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. Could be anything, guys. <laughs> um, and then next week, it looks like, um, uh, I, like Kellen's going to be shadowing, uh, shadowing me for a couple of days. And then I might actually have a day where I'm not necessarily in charge of the show, which I'm excited about. You, mean, hmm. you feel excited now, but maybe when we get there, you'll be like scared. <laughs> oh, I'll be like, Ugh, yeah, like hit the button. It's like teaching your kid how to drive, you know? Like, yeah. You want to hit the brakes. He's going to hit a button. Like, it's basically, oh, this, there, so there is actually a story. So the other day I was at a skate park and there was this dad there with his kid and I felt so bad bad so it was basically the skating version of like the dad telling you to hold how to hold the flashlight right because <laughs> the kid kept like missing the tricks and the dad would just like insult him uh, like not not like in in like in like, like a, how like, like he's like you gotta do it like he's not insulting him he's saying you gotta do this you gotta, like he's just not being he's not a good teacher well you made yeah. it you made it sound like he's like do it like this, you, you idiot! Yeah, like no, basically like, without the idiot part necessarily. But he's like he's talking in this unnecess unnecessarily harsh tone, and I'm just there like, bro, it's not that serious. The kid is like, you should have stepped learned, up yeah. and stood yeah. up to that bully. It was it was ridiculous, and the, and the mom was there like filming him, and it was like, it was, oh, yeah. you would think if the mom were there, she'd be like, 
you know, it was uh, she'd be was, nicer to the kid. But it was weird. So uh, basically, yeah. you know, if you've ever, if you're a, a guy, if you're a, if you were ever a boy and you had a dad who had you hold the flashlight, you know what it's like to constantly <laughs> be doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, did you give social media? Let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Yeah. Uh, Shane Davis Art on Twitter. Uh, talking and Drawing with Shane Davis on YouTube. And that's pretty much it. That's my two major ones. Um, and, and guys, uh, I really want to talk about crowdfunding for a second. Yeah, absolutely. And a parallel economy and a lot of stuff like that. Crowdfunding is super, super important it, 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 to support it to uh, get behind it um, because crowdfunding is a way for a lot of creators to get around gatekeeping, around financial hurdles. And we oftentimes reward you guys with more stuff like trading cards, stickers, um, keychains, stuff like that, just for your support. And uh, right now I feel like crowdfunding is in this place where a lot of people are like, hey, my product's already done, therefore it's better. I don't really pretend or accept that that's the case. I actually think a better product is around the corner by somebody who hasn't even discovered crowdfunding yet. So not everybody has tons of money to put up front to make a ready-made product. And crowdfunding, I think, is the way of the future in fighting basically social justice warriors and corrupt media. All right, we got some, we got some more there, Mary. Okay. Um... I don't know. They're not showing up for me yet. What was the last one you, you've got there? The Shane Wilder. Okay, so uh, I got one from Steve Kralik. says, best $50 I've ever spent seeing Mange dance was truly satisfying. Brett, are you slowly handing off show responsibilities? Say it ain't so. No, no. Basically, I've got some stuff going on that I have to take care of over the next couple of months that will just require me to miss a day here and there, and we can't just miss shows mm -hmm. all the time. So... Um, I'm just going to train Kellen to be able to sit in here so that they can do the show in my absence when that happens. So no, I'm not. I mean, yes, I'm retiring. I'm calling it quits. I'm, you should have just said that. I'm out of here. Guys. <laughs> Can't help but notice there's chickens in the chat. There someone, are. someone said that kid was Tim Pool. <laughs> yeah, it could have. It could have been. It could have been. All Gab right. said, "Mange, don't let Shane down when you might have access to family audience. Starlight Cats is a kids' teen graphic novel for ages six years old to adults. Though my four-year-old niece and three-year-old nephew loved it. Gorgeous artwork. Yes, uh, holding up a copy now. It, it is ready to uh, mail out if you want to buy it today. <clears throat> to from mail. Mail. Don't, not you two. <laughs> Sorry." Sorry, continue. Why Sorry. are you gonna side with Wooden Shot? <laughs> continue. Just no. You just forget, did. You forget picked I said Wooden anything. Shot over forget me. Forget I said you anything. You Wooden Shot over I me. I take it back. No, but just... you did just pick Wooden Shot over me. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my intention. Okay. Oh, your intention was to pick me over Wooden Shot. Yes, that was. What, that <laughs> I don't was think that was my intention either. I mean, I yeah. was trying to stay Switzerland. Very, that's always a good option. Yeah. That's always a good option. Somebody said I'm training my replacement. Yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm training the person who's going to take my job. <laughs> All right. Mary, where can they find you? <laughs> you can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X. That is also Mary Archived. Do you, are you sure you don't want to continue your... Your well, pitch for Starlight maybe, Cats? maybe if you and Wooden Shot will let me pitch Starlight Cats. I'll let I'll you. Pitch it. Yeah, I will let right. you. I will. Go for it. Starlight Cats. All ages, little girl, big adventure, cats in space. You can pick it up at ninelifescomics.com. I'm, I'm so fearful of wooden shot. It's just. <laughs> it's in the store. You can buy it. Ships out tomorrow. Beautiful artwork. All ages, fun book. Thank you. By the way, um, as soon as I asked you of your socials, I was like, crap, did I already ask her to do her socials? As no, always you in didn't. these cases. <laughs> Guys, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twix at Brett Dasific on both of those platforms. Again, if you are new here, please go ahead and check out some of our other videos, our other episodes. Subscribe if you like what you see. Thank you so much for that. We are here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify. If you would prefer to listen to this podcast, 
podcast rather than watch. Perhaps you're working, need something to listen to while you're at work, and you don't have YouTube Premium, which not everybody does. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at PopCulture underscore show. Facebook and not TikTok because we are banned off TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. Mary, there's one more there from K2000. Do you have that one or should I just read it? Leave no cash behind, mange. Take it all. I'm, yeah. I'm, I was convinced. Look, I do my I do an exhaustive count after every episode. And when Shane was here last time, we came back a little light. So yeah. it's completely possible that he pocketed a little bit of it. Just I mean, a little. You know. A couple of fake 20s and 100s showed up at the gas station down the street, and I have the <laughs> feeling I know where it came from. Yeah. Mange the klepto. All right, guys. We will be back with another episode on Monday. We'll see you then. Yep. Bye. Bye, guys. Take care.